you see this lady comment on my Instagram? Um, I, I posted a picture of me wearing glasses because Sam bought me glasses yeah. because mm-hmm. I look at my phone too much. Mm-hmm. It's these blue glasses that Nick was hucking around the office. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh great. The, blue lights, the yeah. UV. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the blue the, lights. Really, I think it's all a big hustle, personally, but that's neither here nor there. They seem to have worked for Nick. Sam also won all in. She was like, I got you some glasses for when you look... And I put them on to make me look like a genius. They do. They mm-hmm. make me look like a fucking genius. Truly. Yep. Had a meeting this morning, wore them in there. I think I got immediate, much more success. Uh, yeah, like, you feel like your performance was uh, kind of elevated. Elevated. Yeah, I think I got some respect. Glass? I think I got yeah, some real yeah. respect because I had pants on, by the way. I had a long sleeve shirt. Wow. I had the glasses on. I looked smart. What do you and Deion Sanders always say? You look good, you feel good. Yep. You feel good, you play good. Yep. Mm-hmm. You play good, they pay good. Yep. Mm. They pay good, you live good. Mm. And? And if you live good, you die good. Uh, and that's yeah, all we're trying to do. That's it. Yeah. It's a Especially it's before a big meeting. And I had those glasses on. And it looked smart. I posted, I wanted to post a video on Instagram. And I said, have I ever looked more intelligent than with these goddamn glasses on? The answer is no. Whole new me, whole new me. Third comment that was stated <laughs> was by a lady named Haley Sent By Reality. Her comment reads this. So many people do not know that there is a cure for herpes virus. Well, there is, and I am a living testimony. I got rid of the virus after taking the medicine Dr. Iboka sent to me. Visit my bio and picture for my story. I simply commented to her comment, what just happened here? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> what, what just happened here? She has since not deleted the comment. Other commenters have gone in, and Haley has not responded at all. But Dr. Iboka? That motherfucker had herpes at one point <laughs> and was willing to dig deeper than anybody else to get rid of it. And I respect that guy. Shout out to Haley, too. Yeah, well, she's trying to get things done. Did she think it was a <laughs> caption contest? I think her, uh, her job is probably to go on huge accounts and yeah. just put that on every yep, single one. Yeah, post and this link. I just, I just, here we go. Here's her bio. I got cured totally of herpes virus by the herbal specialist, Dr. Iboka, after I contacted him through his email address, which is Dr. Iboka Herbal Cure at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Legit yeah. for sure. It's a guy in Fresno. <laughs> wow. Dr. Iboka cures herpes. I mean, he's got a Gmail account, so I'm not going to get a it. Gmail account, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Today is Tuesday, March 26th. Is that correct? Yes, yes sir. 2019, it's going to be a good one. We cover everything from that lady that just said she cured herpes there. <laughs> good for Dr. Iboka and for her. And also, Talk about the madness of March. We talk about the prospect of Zion. We talk about Tom Izzo and his situation that became a very divisive one where he yelled at a freshman player who then went on to miss a dunk and screw some betters out of school. <laughs> we talk about that. We talk about my high school soccer days. We talk about Diggs's. Yep. Junior high soccer days. Tony <laughs> kicks. We have stories for days. It's bracket digs currently. We give picks, predictions, Zito. Uh, Dr. Boca actually cured uh, her son's diabetes as well. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in more of the photo hey, box. Dr. Dr. Boca. <laughs> Dude, that was awesome. Sorry, sorry for the rough thing. <laughs> if you have a fear of herpes or diabetes, there's a guy for you. But if you have a fear of missing out on a big event or a live experience, there's only one company to use, and that's your friends at SeatGeek, the greatest ticket buying app on planet Earth and our moon, which is above us here today. Always. There was a blood moon a couple weeks ago. I don't know if you guys saw that. It was quite a situation. It was very interesting. Makes you think that possibly. Uh, that moon's a lot closer than we think, yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's people living inside of it. Fucked. Could be. I think Left there's the lights on. I think there's people living inside of it. Yep. I think it's possible. But if there was people living inside of it, and they had sporting events, comedy, or theater, they would only use one app and one app alone, and that's your friends at SeatGeek, because SeatGeek scans all the other ticket-buying apps. Oh, all, all of them. All of them. All the other platforms. All of them. They say, hey, 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 you a ticket-buying platform? Mm-hmm. Get your motherfucking ass over here. I need to scan you. <laughs> <laughs> They do that to all the ticket buying platforms and make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck. The best price for a ticket <laughs> you are getting from the best company on earth, and that's SeatGeek. It doesn't just have to be sports. No. no. Although this is a sports podcast, technically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though we dive into herbal cures and shit. Uh-huh. 
you can you can use SeatGeek to get a ticket to anything, any live event, any show, any theater, any comedy, and any sport. SeatGeek has the best tickets at the best prices for the best humans, which is you. And when you use promo code PAT on your first purchase, you get ten dollars off your first SeatGeek purchase. It's a good deal. You get a ticket for less than ten bucks, and it's your first time on there. Use promo code PAT. Guess what? You're going to some bitch for free. Free. <laughs> wow. Woo-hoo. What's better than going to something for free? Nothing. 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 Going again. Oh, oh true. twice for free. No, well, you're probably going to have to pay the next time. <laughs> <laughs> but SeatGeek will make sure you're paying the best prices because that's what SeatGeek does is they look out for you. You're live, but are you living? Go live and experience something live with your friends at SeatGeek. Let's get to this. My short game's doing pretty good right now. Oh, yeah? It was the look two inches in front of the ball. Really pays off, Pat. Yeah, Where you aim? Yeah. Look two inches what? Like you look three inches, of, like you aim it up and then you just aim three inches down. Aim it up and then down? That you aim three inches in front of the ball. I, I, I like it. Yeah, you line it up. You line it up like it's a field goal, and then you try to hit three inches in front of you on that line. If you hit that line, it should, in theory, if you hit the ball straight, yeah. hit your target. Leg with one, club with the other. Same thing, right? Exactly. Swinging the leg, swinging the club. Exactly. Line her up, visualize it, hit that thing three inches in front of you, and uh-huh. if you hit it straight enough and hard enough, it should hit something that's 20 yards in front of you. Should. That's what science says. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start putting a penny. It's because like, there's not always a shoe in front of it, so I'm going to start putting a penny uh, you, in front of it. You can't put your – that then that's adding things to the field of play. For instance – For an object. Matt Stover uh-huh. used to cut little tiny squares of tape – and put him on his sock, and then he would walk out, and whenever I would go out there, he would pull the tape off of his sock and put it on the ground for the spot for me to hit holding. And never in my life have I ever seen anybody do that in my history of kicking, but also I think it's cheating. I'm pretty sure that is is cheating. Yeah, Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's cheating, and I'm the guy that looks like I'm cheating whenever he was bringing the tape out. You'd catch hell. (laughs) You'd be suspended. Game check's taken away from you, and it's Stover on his socks with the the little squares. We're talking about 30 to 40 little squares on his socks, too, like little tiny little squares. He'd put them out there. We'd go out there. He'd put it down on the spot. I'd hold it, and then after he kicked it, I would try to, like, wipe the thing away so it just looked as if it was, like, a little... (laughs) Yeah. It was unbelievable. You can get me in trouble, That's right. I was like, am I going to get... Am I going to get... Potentially like Pete Rose out of this fucking <laughs> yeah. league. So he's the locker room just cutting up pieces of tape. Oh yeah, they're like little tiny. I don't. I don't think he's like, cutting. I think he's just post-it ripping notes. Oh, post-it okay. notes, like, maybe. No, they, no, it's tape. It's athletic yeah. tape. Oh. It was tiny little athletic tape, like this big of squares. It was like that tiny little thing, and he would put it down there for me to hit my spot because this is my first year holding. This is after Vinatieri gets hurt, and I honestly thought the NFL was going to crack down on me. We do it on like turf. I'm like, I don't know if this is supposed to go on turf. And I would have to wipe it out. I'd have to fucking like afterwards, like, yeah, congrats. Nice kick. <laughs> I very much appreciate the OCD involved with that oh. and, the, and the level of perfectionism. Oh. But in no way that's legal. You got to remember, Stover was a guy who used to yell at himself before the yeah, kicks. He'd right? be like, come I'm on, Matt. <laughs> like screaming at himself in the back. I'm like, yo, this fucking guy's outrageous. Again, Stover did nothing wrong. You did everything wrong. I know. Uh-huh. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Matt Stover. This is all you. Because he puts it down. And then my fingerprint is on it because yeah. I'm holding oh, the spot. Sure. And yeah. then you're getting rid of evidence, yes. too. So guy uses gun to kill somebody, huh. puts it in my hand, yeah. has <laughs> me fall asleep with it, wake up, a commissioner comes after me. Right. It's unbelievable. Lucky you lasted that long in the league. That's what I'm saying. I can't believe I made it past my first year. <laughs> so when Vinatieri came back, he, uh, he comes up to me and he goes, Hey, you want me to bring you little pieces of tape? So you don't- <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was like, so I don't fuck up your life? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want me to bring out little pieces of tape for you? I'm like, no. He was like, good. That's good news. So yeah, that was my baptism to holding. But that that is, that, I felt like it was my fault. Is I- that condescending or no? Like, that, no, Stover. Stover. Like, does yes. that come off as super condescending? Yeah, what are you talking about? Well, I just, I don't, I mean, I didn't know Here, if other guys another, would. Absolutely. Here's another possibility, though, because as a person with OCD, it could just be he's like, I will think about nothing else unless I know that tape's there. Yeah, you know but, what I mean? But he, Where was he should be about trusting a, you. He was but. thinking about a lot of things back there, though. Yeah. <laughs> he had a full conversation with Jesus. He had a full conversation with Matt. He was having a full yeah. conversation with everybody. I think he said, 
like one time he was shot on his face. Stover was a great kicker, but boy, he was an interesting cat. I mean, he was a fucking interesting cat. I've never seen anything like him. Where do you go? Where do you go after he got let go of Venetary? Montana. He he has this house out in Montana. He was one of the original investors in CreditCards.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess that sold. Good get. Yeah. So he made he he used to set up like an office in his locker, like. He, he had a fool, like it was literally like he walked into his business office with really? a desk, computer, like, like during the day, it was a computer desk, old school, like, uh, who's Neil Patrick Harris? Who did he play whenever he was? Doogie Howser. He was like Doogie yeah. Howser computer, <laughs> like ding, ding, ding right there. He was just such a smart human being and also one of the most interesting cats. But yeah, I always thought about that tape. Every time we went out there, I'm like... This is going to be me. I'm going to get a 15-yard penalty, and it's going to be my fault. We <laughs> cost everybody because everybody thinks I don't have enough confidence. Did you ever have a chance to talk to any other holders before you? Did he do the same thing for all of his holders? Uh, it's oh, a great question. question. I, don't, I was scared to ask anybody because I thought I was <laughs> cheated, so I didn't want to ask. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to ask like somebody on the other team, like, hey, uh, do you guys put tape on the ground? <laughs> <laughs> when your kicker gives you the tape, do you put it uh, down immediately, or how do you get rid of it? Bro, in most, of, I, I would say 90% of the time, that tape would not stay. I right. mean, so if I hit the tape when I lifted my finger, we'd be off four or five inches. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a uh, safety net for yeah, him. Yeah, it's like a Mentally, security he's blanket. Like, okay, yeah. He's yeah. littering uh -huh. all over fucking fields. <laughs> yeah, what, what's his, what was his pregame like? Because that uh, must have been... I'm telling you, you have no... I, I ain't never seen a character like Matt Stover, but you're talking about kicking... Uh -huh. So if you're a person who is into, like... Like you, you rookie of the year, right? What they that one guy in the locker room had like voodoo and like a snake yes. in there. Yeah. Like there's some people that are very what are those called? Uh, superstitious. 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 Yeah. Like I'm gonna put this left thing on before my right thing. I'm yeah. gonna wear this thing before this thing. There's people that wear the same undershirt for every lift, every game, everything like that. Since they were like in like pee wee football. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. It's crazy. Pee wee football. Pee wee football. <laughs> you know what that is? I'm not saying a word. <laughs> <laughs> the kids. That's all I know for the young, small children. Yeah. Yes, little people That's why football. I'm shutting up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pee wee. There's people that wear the same shirt since like high school it, underneath their shit, right? So there's a lot of superstition. I was never into it. Very thankful that I never got into it because that's it becomes a task. Whenever you have 22 years of superstition built, built up, though, and you do well for 20-some years, you have to abide by those mm -hmm. rules. You have right. to abide it. by yeah. it. You know what I mean? Or else. You don't want to jinx yourself. Yeah. Exactly. You don't, want to, you don't want to be the reason that you fuck yeah. up. <laughs> exactly. After, and if you have 20 years of things built up, there's going to be some weird shit that happens, and I'm happy I didn't fall into that. I'd like to hear the coaches. Think about the coaches. Long years oh, in the life. Man. Players, superstitions, you got them. We never hear about the coaches. Assistant coaches. I don't care if There has to be like oh. rabbit tail things oh, and all that rabbit. That. What is it? Rabbit foot? Yeah. Rabbit, yeah. rabbit, rabbit foot. tail. Having a certain meal before games. It's got to be a lot of that, I bet, right? I'll tell you what. UCF need a goddamn rabbit tail. That, oh. that thing. Oh, hey, man. <laughs> that thing was down and then comes out. But I've been talking about this for weeks, maybe months. Everybody, I, I've been screaming it from the rooftops oh, in this place. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Top of mountains. I've been saying, hey, we need more four point and five point play. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. You score and go to the line, you miss that motherfucker. You get the rebound <laughs> and you get two points instead of just one point. I've been talking about this good basketball IQ, good basketball strategy for a long time. You know who heard it? Iowa heard yep, it. Yep, that's right. Iowa got into overtime, eventually lost it, mm -hmm. but they covered. Good news. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Iowa. Shout out, Iowa. Put up a little fight. Bo Hannon brought one down from the rafters, oh. by the way. That three looked like a Steph Curry three. He shot that thing straight up in the air, and that thing splashed like mm -hmm. I had never seen before. He is crafty. Crafty. Him, him missing that wide open one at the end was one oh, of the most surprising yes. things Backbreaker. of all the, the whole that's tournament. That's tough, man. They started pulling away. In the old flyby. They, they, they start pulling away there. They're, they're going to be very good next year. They only lose one guy. For a half. For a half. <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, everyone knows they're a second half team. That was right. an incredible comeback. Remarkable comeback. Would've, Fun to watch. It would have been the biggest comeback in NCAA uh, history. Yeah. And there's no better people for that type of thing than the gritty Iowans. That's right. That's exactly right. You gas, said it. Gas station pizza. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Too bacony, Portnoy yep, called yep. it. Got attacked by headline news for saying that. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. Iowans deserve that comeback. Pat Anger, Mitch King, mm -hmm. Bob Sanders, Dallas Clark, Ty Schmidt. Mm -hmm. George Kittle. George Kittle. There we go. Mm -hmm. The Iowa fan base deserve that comeback win. They literally deserve that comeback win. They just didn't get it. They lost that game. 25-point lead. You know who won a game, though, on a four-point play? What's that? 
Greatest player in college basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Zion Williamson yep, yep. misses it on purpose because he knows he's got R.J. Barrett, the number two pick in the uh-huh. draft, sitting right there with, I think, a little white guy next to him. Just fouled out the seven-foot-six guy. Taco. You're welcome. Yes. Let me take the big guy out, uh-huh. Taco, who's a hell of a player, by the way. You don't got to do much when you're seven <laughs> no, foot. Yeah. That's why you see a doorman that's seven-foot tall, and he's not a basketball player. He's got work ethic issues. <laughs> we all know it. You don't got to do too much when you're seven foot tall. Taco proved that, and Taco will be a hell of a player. Zion fouls out their big rebound yep. guy. Notices R.J. Barrett's on a guy who might not have as much grit as him. Goes, listen, boys. Whoop, whoop, bird call. Four-point play. Mm-hmm. Misses it short to R.J.'s side. R.J. grabs it, puts it back, takes the lead. Game over. They missed that fucking layup, though, man. Oh, that is so close. Tip in. Do you think there was a little push on the rebound there from RJ? I mean, oh. there's a lot of rules. There's a lot of rules broken in this game. Maybe I mean, charge on Zion? Z- well, wh- which time, though? Zion that goes one. for a dunk earlier on old buddy, and Taco literally just brings both of his <laughs> arms down on both of his shoulders and hits him, like, in the collarbone. No call because it's on Zion. Right. That's against any other player that's a call for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, we can't just we can't just debate about things that happen at the end and not debate the entire game. I think that layup falls, though, man. That is a... That was tough. That is Coach's a, kid. Oh. I mean, it would just been magical for oh. him. Oh, and Johnny Dawkins playing for Krzyzewski for that many yep. years. Yeah. Like you said, now coaching UCF. Aubrey, to be, I believe, is his kid, right? Yeah. Yeah. I want to tell you what. Sometimes there's magical moments in sports that happen out Outside the court, and that Shashevsky talking about uh, Hawkins was was one of them. Yeah. After the game, yeah, heart broke, heartbroken for him. Almost, he almost teared up. His kid played incredible. Yeah. I also think Shashevsky's not that great on the microphone. You would think a coach who's that good at recruiting would do better interviews. He seems to not do that. He's great very dry. He's yeah, a very dry isn't he? What's that? He's like a bell check. I mean, yeah, not yeah. really. Keeps to himself. I don't know. His interviews are just very. That moment was He's very uh, monotone and dry. Yeah. that's the most. That's the most personality I've ever seen him have. He, he just because he almost choked up. But. Yeah, he seems like a guy who doesn't want to be bigger than the game. Something yeah, like, like that type of. Guy. He is though, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Shashevsky is one of the names that Legend. is He's yeah. USA basketball. He's I mean, yes, also yeah. notorious for having one of his assistants do the uh, halftime. That interview makes sense. before he goes into the locker room. Got you. Like he always does that. I enjoy I enjoy that Duke team though. There's a lot of people saying that old Ja was better than Zion because he had one good game and then the next day he went like two for 45 or something <laughs> like that. Everybody's like, this Ja guy is the guy. This Ja guy is the guy. A lot of people saying Zion's not the guy. I just don't know. I just don't know how you I just don't know how you say it. He's very good at okay. creating opportunities for other players when like he's facing some kind of uh adversity like he was with the seven foot six I, tree. I wish Coach K man. would let him run point for a game. Yeah. Just hey, <laughs> he brought it up down the floor. Just There's no see. reason for their point guard to be in there because they literally sat back twelve feet and dared him to shoot threes. So there's no reason for him to be in there. And he Wild. knocked a couple of down, yeah. by the way. He knocked a couple of down. A couple of them. Yeah, he did. What are you he, talking about? A couple of them. He's hit. He's hit the shots he's had to. Like the open looks, he's hit the ones he's had to. Give or take. Except a for the free throw that he missed on purpose for RJ right. Barrett. Oh, Correct. Yeah, he was trying to do that. So I'm a big Zion guy, man. I think he's the guy. Did you see the post game for UCF? No. In the locker room. Oh, uh, very emotional. It was Tear very good. Jerker. A lot of crying in this basket, this college yes. basketball yeah. tournament. Yeah. And by the way, I thought about Coach K talking to Zion when the world was talking about Zion never playing college basketball again. Uh-huh. I thought about Coach K telling Zion, hey, you know what LeBron and those guys don't have? That's a March Madness run, right? Like, you're going to be the next LeBron. Yeah. You're going to be the next big guy in NBA. None of them have a good March Madness run. Zion's like, well, I'm a little rusty. He's like, well, let's play a couple games before March Madness, and let's get you warmed up. Tournament's going to be your time. I think that, that was the conversation that Coach K had with Zion. Like, hey, because well, there's no other reason for Zion to be playing right now. None. No, right. No. Zion's the number one pick regardless. There, there's no questions right. being asked. No matter right what. None. He's doing it strictly to get a big long run. Let's they see. lose the UCF. That's all ruined. And how about what he said to Zion at that last time out before that play when he was like, you were born for this moment. Coach K said that? Well, yeah. And Zion said, when Coach K looks you in the face and tells you you're born for this moment, there's nothing more motivating. <laughs> like Zion was telling that story in the post. He went right into that yeah. fucking taco character. Oh, yeah. He was going for a yam, by mm-hmm. the way, yeah. on him. He was going for a yam ski. Then he lays it in, misses it. On purpose, R.J. Barrett gets the win, <laughs> helps his team out, lifts his team up, makes his teammate, who was the number one recruit coming out of high school, makes him think he hit the game winner, which really was Zion. <laughs> I mean, this is a perfect Genius. play by Zion. Perfect play by Zion. Anything to say over there? None. None. Can't wait to watch him at the association. <laughs> <laughs> Six-game road, tr- road he, swings. His West athletic Coast. ability, I said this over the weekend, and it's, have you ever, do you ever watch Sean Kemp play? He's a 
a couple Ooh. years ago. Not a couple years ago, but dream team type NBA player who is just out of this world, gym athletic, handles well. That's my NBA comparison, Sean Kemp. Hold on, somebody What's told going? me somebody told me he's like Blake Griffin. Yeah. Okay. Uh he's he's a poor man's Blake Griffin. <laughs> And I was like, a poor man's Blake Griffin. What? Didn't Blake Griffin play in the same tournament? Yes. He yes. played in Oklahoma, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. One and done. I don't know if he's doing with Zion. Zion can do whatever the fuck he wants. Zion he, can already shoot. If Zion was on that Murray State team with Ja, mm-hmm. if he was just like Ja was, right. Zion would be putting up 45 mm-hmm. shots a game. He would be the point guard. He'd be everything. Yes. I mean, he would be able to do the same shit. For sure. And what, good for Charles Barkley. Did you see when he how he responded when they tried to make the comparison yes, to him? I and he was just that. like... Oh, he's way more talented than I am. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they got Charles Barkley sitting there for 10, 12 hours. Yes. Just in the same seat. Getting loopy. That's unbelievable. There was, yeah. there was a tough uh, Charles Barkley, like, big head segment, kind uh, of head segment. It was, it was yeah. tough to watch. Was, I think that's why they the do Wally Zerbiak. They want him to get loopy and say something ridiculous and just have it go. Yeah. He's, uh, he's getting to the point, though, where I think he's almost falling asleep at moments, <laughs> and they got to be like, yo, that's Dick's thing. That ain't your thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, you got to wake up on TV. <laughs> they, they put them through a grueling schedule. The guy with the thick eyebrows, I'm learning, was really good at basketball. Very good. Was that Wally? Wally, Wally, Wally yeah. Zerbiak? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, he's got some thick eyebrows. Handsome guy, yeah, but those yeah. eyebrows are tough. Those things are. What does he do? He Sick. used to play basketball back in the yeah, day. Yeah, he used to be a little shooter. Yeah. He played for the Celtics Little. He led the Miami, Ohio team to the Final Four when he oh. was in college. Got you. He's, he's like a poor man's Corver. There yes, you that's a perfect good comparison. Yes. You think Corver's better? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He says some good things on TV. I like the Wally guy on TV. Yeah, he's yeah. smart. Well no, spoken. He is good. Clark Kellogg always has energy. I don't yeah. know how he always has energy. Cereal. He's the same character. He's a robot. Clark's a robot. He's yeah, the worst. Cereal. <laughs> Got your cereal <laughs> Jesus uh, Ernie? Yep. Is, is, is all time. Yeah. Yeah. Constant professional. Yeah. Does baseball. You can see he gets a bit tired there towards the end, too, and just kind of mails it in. He, yeah. They're looking for anybody to go on a nice two, three minute run. <laughs> <laughs> anybody want to take this from us? I, I'm enjoying this March Madness. Everybody's saying this is the bad March Madness. I mean, for me, the only thing that's been bad is my betting. But other than that, I've enjoyed watching the game. Are they saying that? I assume they say that because all sixteen favorites won this weekend. Is there was it? not yeah. one upset? Yeah. Sam, mm-hmm. my lady, mm-hmm. I think she's like ninety six percent or something, like ninety seven percent. I mean, the ESPN thing. She's in the thousands or hundreds. Incredible. She's in the top hundreds wow. of thousands. That's Jeez. really good. She feels very good about it. <laughs> she should. I would too. I'm she, sitting at she the cheered for somebody winning. And then checked her bracket and like did like a, oh never mind like she didn't even know she has no idea who she's picking but she has she's like at, in the ninety six percent hour ninety seven percent hour something like that that's just classic pick tournament teams by mascot and colors and shit like I that. I think she's gonna win the way better than everyone there's a ch- there's a chance that Sam's gonna win our ESPN bracket and that's gonna be tough to fucking hit. Really <laughs> my sweet sixteen is totally intact I have a. I didn't miss a team for the Sweet 16, and I'm like in the middle of our bracket. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's very tough. There's over seven thousand people in that thing, and Sam, I think, is gonna has a chance to really run at it. I have no idea how she's she's doing well gambling. She always does well too. You already gave her a big prize though, so <laughs> <laughs> big, one. big one. Yeah. By the way, huge news on that front. What's oh, oh. oh. Mm. I don't even know if I should talk about it. Ah, what the hell. Go ahead. There's an Im- <laughs> there's an imperfection in the diamond. Oh yeah, you told us. Oh, boy. I don't think I've said it publicly. No. Oh. There's an imperfection in the diamond. So Sam found the imperfection with her naked eye. Mm-hmm. So Sam went back to said jeweler and said, "Excuse me, are you trying to fuck over my boyfriend because you knew he wouldn't look at it?" And they were like, no, no, what do you mean? She's like, boom, imperfection right here. To their credit, they are searching far and wide for another diamond, the exact same. But Sam is, she run in there ready to fucking burn the place down. Let's go. Like, yeah, like, and she, went to, she was ready to go to war. I was like, what are you, what's going on? Like, ah. She's like, no, you don't get it. They tried to fuck you over. And I'm like, I don't think so. She's like, no, no, they did. They wouldn't have sold you this time. I just found it coming out of the shower. There's no way that somebody with a little thing. Yeah, they have those things in their eyes. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> what, that. that's what Sam said. But I guess there was a way they talked her off of burning the place down, but they are finding another one, which is good. That's good. What happened to the imperfection one? Could we chop it up and sell it on the market? Very, yeah, make it just a, chop off the imperfected <laughs> yeah. side. Let's make a new perfected one. I don't know what's going to happen. Do I have to exchange that? Yeah. No, I mean... Just uh, give it to a buddy. They're probably going to want it back. I don't know. I honestly don't know. It would. It, that's a bad look for that place, though. Right. I was going to say you can't oh, resell yeah. it. Yeah, can they're going gonna to no. want it back. Uh, a diamond like that with an imperfection is still worth something. Oh, you, yeah, yeah. You know, you're still worth... 
maybe not what they sold it to you for, but yeah. Yeah, a little exchange. One yeah, for because one. they sell them at different grades, right? So, oh, yeah. yeah it was just so more, mine was yeah. a colorless, blah, blah, blah. No, like the, I, because I told Sam, they sat me down and they went through all the paperwork. They, it was a, uh, there's like a letter, like A through F and then numbers and it's where it falls into numbers. It's like a teeth whitening strip yeah. where it's like, are you a, uh, your whiteness is at a six. We need to get it to a two. <laughs> they have that for diamonds too with all the things. Huh. Mine was supposed to have no imperfections, colorless, this whole thing. He went through the whole thing with me. Very nice of them. Shook hands. They even brought me a water and a tea. It was very nice wow. altercation. Mm -hmm. But this was very much within 48 hours. So it was all kind of getting rushed. They're just going to restock it in the case that I would look at. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the ones that are kind of fucked up, <laughs> but big. I told Sam it's not about that anyway. I told, <laughs> I told Sam it's, it's not about that. It's not about that. It's not the about thought. the diamond. Look at you. Look at me. Life is yeah, imperfect. Look at hey. 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 Sam. Sam, it's about the love. It's about your March Madness bracket. It you is. Mm -hmm. Something awesome. It's about something awesome. Yeah. What if I? What if she wins the bracket? Yeah. And then we go ahead and gift her. A new diamond. There we go. <laughs> Something pretty awesome. That's Something awesome. Pretty awesome. <laughs> what a wild scene, though. Sam walking into that fucking jewelry store ready to burn it down. Just like Seth Rollins. <laughs> Just like fucking oh. tuning up the band. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. This diamond uh, that was on the news in Arkansas, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Indiana, and Michigan for some reason, uh, that we did it over there in Avatar, it's an imperfect one. Mm -hmm. yeah. so they posted, uh, the jewelry store posted about our engagement. Oh, they did? Oh, no. Yeah, ah. Sam screenshot it and was like, what do I do? I was like, just like it. She was like, no, I want to go to the comments. <laughs> I want to go to the comments. Sam wanted to go in the comments. She is a... A uh, little bit of a bulldog, whatever <laughs> she thinks that we're getting fucked over, and I love it because I don't have that. I just have like ah, whatever. We'll right. just get another one. She's like no, 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 no. She puts her foot down and she's ready to go to battle, which isn't always great, you know. <laughs> but but <laughs> but I need ninety nine point nine percent of women, as far as the ring goes and the imperfection, would react the same way. She, like they, they, you know, they want it to be perfect. I think and she, they deserve it. I, I agree. And yeah. by the way, we paid for a perfect. Yes, we paid for. Yeah. A, we paid for a perfect time. <laughs> but her just, I, I would love to have been there the day she found that thing and was just like, oh, what the fuck is this? Motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would have loved to see it. Alarm. The willies. The heebie-jeebies. Panic. There are dozens of words for fear. But just one for an exceptional home security company to stop the fear at your front door. Simply safe. Yes. Wow. <laughs> you guys didn't think that was coming? No. 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 Mm. We interrupt this incredible conversation to tell you that Simply Safe is home security that knows it feels good to fear less. This award-winning 24/7 protection that protects your home through it all, through blizzards, blackouts, and burglars. Simply Safe has won awards, which we love here. We do oh, yeah. love, love awards. Love. love the killer bees. You don't just what's that? Blizzards, blackouts, and burglars. Oh. Oh, wow. Hey. 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 You don't just follow the top of the mountain. you got to earn those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You earn those awards from all the tech experts that count. The Verge calls it the best home security. It won Reader's Choice from PC Magazine. It's a two-time winner of CNET Editor's Choice and a wire cutter top pick. What? Wow. That's a lot of accolades. Simply yeah. Safe has no contract, no hidden fees, and no gotchas. <laughs> And they always keep their prices fair and honest. Thanks to Simply Safe, fear has no place in a place like home. Try Simply Safe with free shipping and free returns. You'll get a 60 day risk free trial too. Order now and have your home protected within a week. Go to simplysafe.com slash McAfee to get started today. That's S I M P L I S A F E dot com slash M C A F E E. Be sure to go there so they know we sent you. Simplysafe.com slash McAfee. Even if you're not 100% certain you're going to purchase, go ahead and snoop around. Just go ahead and. Just go ahead and type into your little Google thing right now. S I M P L I S A F E dot com forward slash McAfee. That's M C A F E E. Snoop around because it's better to be comfortable. And the only way to be comfortable is with 100% security and protection from your friends at Simply Safe. It is very nice, but I have it. I love it. the best. You just, you, you, I have it. I love it. Yeah. You, you feel as if you have like some big time alarm system because you have cameras you have an app and it tells you when somebody's coming or when they're yeah, going exactly and it's cheap 
Easy to install and hassle free, and simple. you'll get it within a week. It's simple. It's simply safe. Dot com forward slash McAfee. Alarm! The Willies! Heebie jeebies! Panic! <laughs> no more. Thanks to your friends at Simply Safe. Thank you. We went and got yes. lunch at Applebee's. I get a text from Foxy. It's like, hey, Nick and Connor and I are near the Castleton Mall. Do you guys want to get lunch? We go to Applebee's. <laughs> I've never seen a worse customer service oh in my, my entire God. life than what happened to Connor. Oh, my goodness. All of us got kind of fucked. I mean, we the, did. Yeah. there's five bad. of us there. There's five of us there, including Sam, and the waitress walks up. There's not a lot of people in there. Mm. Waitress walks up, asks us what we want. And then she tries to go from the memory thing, oh. but everybody's getting a combo apps, three combo apps. So what? three, what? once she got to six, like two people, and she's like, I better go get a paper, uh, paper and pencil. We're like, good idea, yeah. good idea. <laughs> she goes over, comes back, writes it all down, goes back. It's probably 45 minutes to an hour before getting a drink or food there, right? Mm -hmm. We get our food brought out to us. Everybody gets their food except for Connor. Mm -hmm. I got my <laughs> salad and my meal at the same Maybe time. Maybe the worst salad I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> it was four pieces of lettuce with uh, two croutons and like some Parmesan cheese or a Caesar salad. I'm like, sure it is. But at this point, it was already an hour into the thing. Everybody gets served except for Connor. So Connor looks at the lady and goes, I ordered a... Uh, buffalo chicken club. And she goes, oh, it's on its way. That lady then turns around, goes behind the bar, Orders doesn't it. say a word to anybody. <laughs> no, did not order yeah. it. We actually yeah. watched her not go put down anything, not say anything to the chef. Went to the bar, got a couple people some drinks, started watching a game, laughing. We all need a refill, not a single thing. Comes back over, asks us if we need anything else, like 30 minutes later. Like, uh, this guy still is not going. Oh, it's coming. Goes back. I think she then punches it in to yeah. order it. Wow. It then came like two hours after order. Goodbye. I would say two hours after ordering. On our way out, there is a probably a party of 10 that sits down. Yep. We pat their table, and I say, good luck. And then we just like, <laughs> walk out. That Applebee's near Castleton Mall, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. That is the worst restaurant experience I've ever <laughs> had. No, it, it was atrocious. And you said everyone got combos. I didn't get a fucking combo. I just got one sandwich. That a boy. And everyone else got combos. And I was like, look, I didn't order three things like everybody else. Just give me my goddamn bacon, grilled chicken, whatever the fuck so, it is. And then he gets it to go, because yep. we're all about done at this place. We've been here for two hours, barely got our food. He asks for it to go box. She brings a box not big enough to fit a sandwich. No, 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 no. Of course it's not big enough because it's the whole damn sandwich. It's meant for half. It was a tiny little box, so he can't even take his shit to go. It was just a nightmare experience. Kicked out of the Tux place. Applebee's fucked him. He hasn't won a bet since then. I haven't won a bet since then. That's the, that's the Applebee's curse because I know I would have won too. It was for the record, I wanted to go to Olive Garden. Right OG next door. was right there. Uh, Good breadsticks. But I was keto. I, I am keto. I'm currently on keto for the WrestleMania. I'm trying to find a jawline. And uh, it just, it's been a, it was an interesting Saturday, man. It was a very interesting How Saturday. How was the tipped at Applebee's? Uh, I mean, may I ask? <laughs> I still tipped. I, I, yeah. yeah, I still tipped. Had to. You had a moment, yeah. but. Normally I write. I'm not scared to write on the receipt, mm -hmm. like an entire diatribe, like about the experience. Because anytime my name is on something, there's a chance that that is going to get screenshotted and I'm going to look like a bad guy. Right for not tipping enough, or doing this, or doing that. So anytime I'm not gonna, I normally tip like fifty percent. It's normally like a forty to fifty percent tipper. That's just honestly, unless it's DoorDash where you have to tip beforehand, where sure. Sam has it set up. I think that's at like twenty five or thirty percent. I'm normally a forty fifty percent tipper. Standard, keep it moving. If I drop down to the thirty percent or something like that, something's up. Very you bad, but I will write. I will write an entire story on that. <laughs> have you before? Oh yeah, well, numerous <laughs> times. I've been like. By the way, is normally how it starts with a dot, dot, dot. Like, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I write it down. <laughs> with all due respect. With all due respect. <laughs> Maybe today is the day that you decide that you are not a good server. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I will write up the whole thing. Like, Sam, my lady and I waited 45 minutes for a drink, an hour and a half for our food. You didn't seem to care at all. And for that, you were only getting this amount of tip. Because if, if, if I'm screenshotted, that person is automatically has more value to the world than I do. And I look like the bad guy when really a tip is supposed to be a reaction to how they serve. Mm. And there's a lot of fucking terrible goddamn servers out there. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So I'm not scared to get ahead of the game and write an entire story on there. So it's like, yo, this is what happened. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not scared of it. 
I don't. I also don't like that my name's right on the top with my card with everything I do. Yeah, I mean, probably should have been on blast at that point. Yeah. What makes a person like that decide they want to be a server? Not every job is for every person. That's you what, what I'm I mean? saying. It's like you know better than that. Every time you're <laughs> growing up and your mom or dad asks you to go get something, you like, hey, will you go get a screwdriver? You'd bring a hammer. You're not going to be a good. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> did she look like a lifer? Like, did she look like she'd been working there for a while, or did she look like a high school kid? The oh, manager boy. brought his food out an hour and forty five minutes later and didn't say anything. Just put the food down uh, with a yeah. smile <laughs> and said, "You're welcome." I, I don't think it's just a server issue. Wow. That yeah. is the institution. That yeah. is an entire operation. See, problem. that's the issue with Applebee's. Is just it's wildly inconsistent from location to location. Volatile. I'm it an is. Applebee's guy, though. I know you are. I love them ribs in this keto diet. I love them ribs. But it, every time I go into a, a, an Applebee's, there's always a chance that this is going to be the worst service I've ever had in my entire <laughs> life. And that's what happened today that's on Saturday. Happened. Yeah, that's what happened. It is what it is. I've only been to Applebee's twice, so they're shooting 50%. We had a water, a hot tub issue. Didn't have enough water in it. They don't tell you that whenever you get a fucking hot tub. So you got to worry about how much water's in it. Or it's going to squeal like a fucking baby all night. <laughs> Woke up out of nowhere. I thought a goddamn pig was dying in the backyard. It was the goddamn hot tub. Didn't have enough water in the fucking filter thing. was... <laughs> I honestly thought somebody was sawing into the back of the house. <laughs> I go down there. I'm like trying to turn it off. And every time I hit the button, it just got louder and worse. I like, and I looked. And I was like, oh, there's not enough water in here. And obviously, we don't have a single hose that reaches to that area. <laughs> Been in the hot tub three times probably, by the way. Worse, I've, I've talked about a hot tub not being my thing. Mm -hmm. I've said this isn't my thing. My parents had one growing up. Not growing up. When I got into high school, they put one in the back because my dad started getting sore. He loved it. One in naked. I refused to go in it. <laughs> when the Colts had one, I'd go in the cold tub. I wouldn't go in the hot tub. I'd only go in the cold tub. I'm not a hot tub guy. I think a lot of bad shit lives in there. Then we walked into a store here in town. Uh, it's a Kin Relax store. And we, <laughs> we go in there, and there's this hot tub basically for free. I'm like... I'm like, yeah, we should take that. We should just get that. <laughs> Put it in there. Been there for three. Been in there probably three times. Been there for a year. And all of a sudden, a couple nights ago, it just starts howling at me. <laughs> we have no hose that reaches into it. So I got to take a cool. It's like, uh, eh. 5.45, 6 a.m. Oh, 5.45, 6 a.m. This thing is just squealing through the house. Can't turn it off. If I unplug it, I think it's going to get cold. Then it'll be even worse. I think I'm going to break the thing. So I grabbed one of them coolers uh, that somebody left at my house like three years ago. <laughs> I go over to the fucking hose thing. I fucking uh, sp spray out all the fungus. I fill it up, and I walk over to the hot tub, and I dump it in. There isn't a single movement of the, <laughs> of the water, not a single movement. I did that seven times. I walk back and forth with the thing, and then I, it stops squealing, and I go inside. I go lay down, and, and Sam tells me I could have just turned it off. So he you could have just turned it off, and I was like... I thought I'd blow the wires. <laughs> I thought I'd blow the wires. I thought I'd break the thing. I'm bad, man. I'm in a bad spot. I'm in a fucking bad spot, dude. But I feel like I really earned my keep. <laughs> yeah, at least you got to go to bed for 10 minutes and then wake up and take a shower and go to work. No, no, it was this weekend. I was good. It was actually before I got... <laughs> Shoot away. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Imagine if you had the cooler scooters working. I know. That would have been way easier. I know. I know. It would have been nice. Saturday wasn't, or was it Sunday? It was Weekend, Saturday. That wasn't a great day for you. Yeah, but I enjoyed it, man. I enjoyed it all. Like, when those situations of me getting kicked out of places, I just love it. I, I, like, I love that type of stuff. I, I think you're really fair, though, in all these situations when you retell the stories, okay? So, like, when we're in Florida and we go to, like, a mom pod diner, they give us good service. I've seen you give a $100 bill, yep. and we're out of there. Or yep. like in Arizona, when they gave us awesome service at that steakhouse. Bang, here you go. Here you go. But then, you know, the lows. The lows are bad. Are, if, if you're bad, you're bad. Like, there's nothing else I could do about this. Like, I, I and this is Scott Van Pelt. That speech he gave was uh, mm -hmm. very real and very good. It's like, I can't reward bad behavior. So I can't be tipping you 50 to 100% of this bill right. whenever you are a dog shit server. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about correct. Lowe's Home Improvement Store? What? Lowe's no, like the Lowe's. highs and lows. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought you had bad service at a Lowe's. <laughs> I will let it be known. I have not been in a Lowe's Home Improvement Store 31 years of my life. <laughs> Really? I, I was an Ace Hardware guy. Oh, oh yeah. Don't or Stanford. Don't Stanford expect Stanford. much when you go there. Then the worst are the, the guys and girls that work in the paint section. <laughs> And, like, you are literally positioned behind a desk. Like, you're my only option. I have to go through you. <laughs> like, I can't just go mix my own paint and then take it to the register. You have to do it for me. And they always ask like you're putting them out. They always act like you're putting them out. You know what the issue is? What's that? 
Self awareness is at an all time low. All right, it man. really is. It is. If you're not supposed to be a waiter, you're not supposed to be a waiter, server, whatever you want to call right. yourself. I'm so sorry that I said that. Growing up, I knew I had to work that kind of job when I was younger. So I always worked in the kitchen being a cook. I was like, I can't deal with people. I'm not going to do hey, this. It's I not going to work out. I was in the food industry. Yeah, you were. I was in the food industry. Yep. And the people that I allowed to order from my store, <laughs> instead of sending elsewhere, I was chipper, so five that, star. Yeah. That's what's crazy, though, is you were actually going the extra mile to give them good enough service so that they could get it elsewhere. Hey, real quick, you order from here, you're not getting it for like a good hour, hour, 15 minutes, okay? The deaf guy running the grill is a good guy, but he's backed up right now. And it's just me here. I shouldn't even be working here. You should order from down the street. I didn't say all those words, but that's what I meant. <laughs> I, I think that we have a self awareness issue. I think we have a self awareness issue. Definitely. People taking jobs yeah. that they shouldn't have, hating their lives, going on social media, bitching at everybody else about how they should hate their lives. When really, if people just found something they loved, maybe it would be a better world. Mm -hmm. Amen. Much better. 100%. Amen. A lot of people can't get jobs, though, you know, because they potentially were arrested before. Correct. Or uh, dumb. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a that. big factor. A lot of that. Yeah. Applebee's is always hiring. A lot of dumb dumbs. Uh, Applebee's. I know a particular Applebee's that no matter how shitty you are at your job, you can be worse and work at said Applebee's. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can tell you there is someone at Applebee's who is the best. Mm -hmm. He or she is the best in their field yeah. that I've ever seen. I saw a commercial come on this weekend during the tournament. It was a food commercial, and I knew it was an Applebee's commercial before the Applebee's name even came up because whoever directs those commercials and chooses the camera angles and how the food falls and how it's shot is the best they, in the entire business. They do an incredible job. Applebee's is incredible. They the commercials are unbelievable. Other than that, they go uh, fuck themselves. When a place has good servers, uh, like I, I will go there every day. Yeah. Like I will go there just it's for hard the to service. Find. It's hard to find, man. Another thing that's hard to find is a big corporation or company that has any backbone. <laughs> Coca-Cola wanting oh, to be the official God. timeout of TV time or official drink of TV timeouts <laughs> is one of the most low goals I've ever heard from a company in my life. The, the thing that they were reading was Orange Vanilla Coke wanted to be the official drink of TV timeouts. Who the fuck wants to be the official drink of TV <laughs> time? You are Coca-Cola. Have a little bit more respect for yourself. Yeah. And I am sick of seeing it. I don't know how it tastes. Ty went and bought one, Ty. I did. Uh, I mean, it's not great. You know, it's not terrible, surprised. but it's not great. You said it was just vanilla Coke. Yeah, pretty much. You can barely, very, very distinctly taste the orange in there. But I don't like that the, their angle was they wanted to be the official drink of TV timeouts. Like, uh, 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 why? <laughs> Your coat. How does that come up? Like the official drink of TV timeouts. Is there anything worse? The injury timeout, I guess. <laughs> Is there anything worse than a TV time? No. It's like from start to beginning, like we're going to flood people with marketing and then we're going to have a terrible angle. Like, I don't know how that because in Coke, I seen a little diagram. They were the number one company on earth for a long, long time mm -hmm. until tech took off. Yep. That thing is insane. I think that may be a reason why is because they're shooting that low for things. I've yeah. never had an orange vanilla Coke. Never will. Eh, maybe I will one day, day after WrestleMania. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but that whole wanting to be the official drink at TV timeouts, I was like, what the fuck, man? Why don't you be the official drink of like the Sweet 16 or something? Yeah, yeah. or like, right. or, uh, or game winning shots mm -hmm. or the, something, a TV timeout. All timeouts. Who even. the fuck? Some media person got in there and was like, you know, it's a big deal. Yeah. TV timeouts. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Nobody gives and a. Who decided fuck? to run it like 14,000 times during the weekend? Them. Them, it's them. It's all their fault. This is a hundred percent Orange Vanilla Coke's team marketing team's fault. Mm -hmm. Couldn't they also be the drink of TV timeouts if they said, "Hey, you only air this commercial right here during TV timeouts." I like the Phil guy with AT and T. I enjoy that. Yeah. They watched Witten and they were like, "This is what we're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> we are gonna make." Because by the way, Phil has some hilarious analysis, uh -huh. and color commentary about Purdue. Yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> yeah, I laugh at Phil. I have not gotten sick of Phil at the AT and T. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings not bad, not too bad. Uh, uh, there are a lot of places. Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, agree to disagree. <laughs> I sh You know what? I, I'm happy that Bob Menery, internet guy, got a TV commercial. Okay, I am. Internet people getting TV commercials is awesome. It's a big deal. I would assume though that it has not gotten the internet push that they assumed it would though. All right? That's in my head from a marketing strategy. Mm -hmm. Just like the orange vanilla Coke. Marketing strategy people wanting to be the official drink of TV timeouts 
is not a good angle. Buffalo Wild Wings, I assume, thought they would get a huge internet push from it. I'm not sure they have. How do we feel about like the Genesis halftime show then? Good move or terrible move? Is that the one where they literally had trash play, right? Yeah, Garbage yeah. play yeah. the first time? I think that was bad optics. Terrible. <laughs> mm-hmm. The Genesis halftime show, trash. <laughs> it's like bad optics, bad idea. <laughs> Uh, are they doing that for March Madness? No, no, but I was just curious. For Monday Night Football? Yes. I don't mind that type of shit. I don't mind like innovation into entertainment to keep people's something new, uh, like attention or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think marketing's changing a lot. I, I think there's hits and misses on everything, but just the strategy to dump. Think about how much money Orange Vanilla Coke put into that. Huh, can't even imagine. So, so much. much. It has to be like maybe a $15, $20 million deal right there. Probably. Yeah, I mean, I've seen that commercial way more than any of the other ones. It's yeah. probably a $15, $20 million ad deal right there for the NCAA March Madness. Probably, if I had to guess. How many variations of Coke do we need at this point? Like, if <laughs> Coke original Coke sales are falling off, it's because of diets and keto. Come out with some, Don't make a sweeter hey. version of your... Hey, I'm a big Coke Zero guy. Yeah, they figured oh, yeah. it out with Coke uh, Zero. I'm, I'm, tell you Co- what. I'm a big Coke <laughs> that, Zero That guy. makes sense, though, right? I've been, a, I've been a Coke Zero guy for a solid, solid, what, like 17, 18 days. At least. I mean. When I learned there was no carbs in Coke Zero, I went really? all in. Yeah, when I learned. I didn't know that they had no carbs. As soon as I learned they had no carbs, it's like. So good. I, I, I'm like fucking, I'm yeah. literally shotgunning Coke Zero cans <laughs> at the house just trying to get it down. Now we're, we're talking about stuff inside of drinks. When did the war on corn syrup start with Bud Light? That's like a that great po- question. I, I, corn I didn't know corn syrup was, t- was bad for you. People so, have been coming to corn syrup for a long time. So now. the informant the underground is, movement. The, I didn't know that. The informant is when I learned the corn syrup's in everything. It's a Matt Damon right. movie mm-hmm. where I learned that corn syrup is literally in everything. That movie a lot better than Downsizing. <laughs> the movie is so good. But corn syrup is in everything, and I guess it's very terrible for I you. I did not know that. I, I guess it's pretty terrible for you, but it makes everything taste good. Uh, it sure does. And it's, back to the Coke flavors for a second. I think this came about from those vending machines, or not the vending machines, but the fountain drink machines yeah. now, oh, the, the new age ones, ones where you can anything. get any selection of any flavor you want inside of there. They had two I, empty slots in there. They're like, yeah. <laughs> no, no, people probably mixed it. I oh, yeah, people were mixing all kinds of oh, shit. But I'm wondering, like, if, data? I'm wondering yeah. if there is data in there that feeds them back to them. And they're like, That's hey, okay, people, people, people are drinking the shit out of this orange in here, too. Yeah. I don't I don't know how the drink, I'm honestly, I have no, the drink could be incredible. I, I am a Coke Zero guy. Mm-hmm. I am a Coke guy. Huge. Huge. You have been forever. 17, 18 days. <laughs> Long time. Two weeks. That's an eternity on the internet. But the, the marketing strategy to pay 15, 20 million and have the angle be that we want to be the official drink of a TV timeout is dumb. They should have spent money in the strategizing as well instead of just the thing. Buffalo Wild Wings, I see what they were trying to do. I respect it. They're trying to do that. The Phil AT&T thing, I enjoy that. But the amount of money that this March Madness is making is absurd. What is it? It was just four or five days, and that had to gross I even $300, 400000000 million mm-hmm. for TBS or TNT or Turner or whoever the fuck it is. That's insane, dude. Yep. Mm-hmm. How much does the NCAA make off it? A billion? Does Turner pay a billion for that? I would assume. Yeah, I don't know the money. exact figure, but Not I would sure. assume that wouldn't surprise me. But the me. American yeah. Athletic Conference just paid or just got paid a billion dollars by ESPN football. A billion dollars. Yeah, ESPN. one point um, one. What's that? The American thing? Oh, this is for the NCAA. NCAA Turner paid the um, NCAA one point one billion dollars. There you I, go. I read a, I read a stat that said uh, the NCAA from the TV rights money could pay out every D one college athlete fifty grand a year and still have like three hundred twenty five million dollars left <laughs> over. And that's uh, they just don't the, know how they don't have enough money to pay everybody. Right, right. Um, 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 um. So one point one billion for the March Madness. Mm-hmm. Look up the ESPN deal with the American. Uh, Athletic conference, football. I think oh. it's. I think it's the. It's American something. One billion. The AAC, ESPN, TV deal. Um, yeah, it's a billion dollars. Wow. One billion dollars wow. just for what? What is it called? The American Athletic Conference. The American Athletic Conference football just got paid a billion dollars for the TV rights. That's just the American, which I've never heard of this conference. I think that's Houston, UConn, mm-hmm. UConn stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. It is. One billion dollars they just got paid by ESPN to do their TV rights. March Madness, $1.1 billion. Hey, at least the players get a piece. It's insane. I think we're on that. I think we're in that area where the NCAA is going to have to answer for some of this stuff, and it's going to become a social movement <laughs> because it's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. They had a Zion camera. C- or t- yeah. CBS <laughs> <laughs> just a Zion camera. It's like, we don't think Zion... What if Zion blows his knee out from that shoe, by the way, and just can't play basketball ever again? What the fuck's he left with? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. 
What, what if what if next game there's a taco that goes up uh, <laughs> that blocks him and dislocates his shoulder and he can't ever fix it and he's fucking never plays again? What does he get from it? Nothing. Mm-mm. What did Duke get it's from a it? Serious issue. Billions. What did mm-hmm. ESPN get from it? Billions. It's just it, mm-hmm. NCAA got billions from it. And everybody's like, well, uh, college players are greedy if they ask for money. It's for love of the game and they got free education. It's like, no. How about we respect that they have brains and that they realize that they're getting fucked because that's kind of what's happening yeah, with the NCAA. being used. Hey, we're being fucked right now. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we would all like talk about it. Oh, you're selfish. So first we're dumb. Yeah. First college athletes are dumb. <laughs> then they're selfish. Then there's every other excuse in the book. But it's just as the money train continues to run, shout out bro, bro, bro bets, by the mm-hmm. way. Locks on top of the locks on top of the locks. As the money train continues to move, at some point, the money's going to have to stop. Yeah, and it's going to have to go labor. to college yeah. players. It's going to have to. You know what's hilarious, too, is you were talking about how like the NCAA has no self-awareness with this. Oh. And then they tweet out, it was either Saturday, Sunday, about how the hotels are giving out That's free Wi-Fi. That's from 2016, but yes. Still, still, like, yeah. still like, I mean, it, it went viral again. You know, yep. people just hammered it. Like, I mean, I didn't, I didn't look at it. I thought it was just like a troll tweet. I thought it was a joke. No, it's from, it, it's from 2016. Whenever they actually tweet that out, oh, by the way, every player gets free Wi Fi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. We can search for our highlights on ESPN on the internet for free by you guys. You're so nice. <laughs> You're so and nice. I think this is your stance. If, um, all right, say so Zion, obviously a huge influencer at this point. If he Probably won, the biggest on earth right yeah, now. Yeah. So if he wanted to take a $200,000 payment for an Instagram post for somebody, he should be able to do that. Yep. It has nothing to do with the school. has nothing to do with the NCAA directly. None of that stuff. Or could just conversely, let's say just you're at um, – you play for Houston – and you're, or well, better yet, Western Kentucky. You're popular within Bowling Green, Kentucky. Yep. You want to do a commercial for a local car dealership, but they want you to do it. You should be able to take four grand to hey, do that. Hey, mm-hmm. by the way, if if the pimps at NCAA want to take a percentage, go sure. ahead and do it. Yeah. yeah. Because you gave Zion the platform to be a Duke player. Not that the internet didn't tell us who Zion was before he got to Duke, and not that he has brought more attention to Duke than Shashevsky himself in the last 10 years. But if you want to take a 20% or 30 or 25% or whatever you want to take, take it then. At least you're making money. But people should be able to make money off their own names. They mm-hmm. own their own names. Zion is Zion. Zion built Zion by doing Zion things to little white kids in high school. <laughs> yeah. and now he's doing the same things to seven foot six guys in the NCAA. I think that that is what I've always said. They've always said that they can't pay players because they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to pay them. They, oh, well, strategically it wouldn't map out because not every school makes money. Remember, it's only a select few. Whatever, cool. If that's the stance you want to, I, I can't dive into the books. I'll, we could send CFO Phil into those books <laughs> and we can find out very quickly sure. if that's the case. But at least let guys make money off their names. They own their yeah. names. And then the answer is no. Or if you want to be real about it, stop using their names. Mm-hmm. Just go like the old NCAA video games did. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll see how interesting your broadcast is when you have to refer to everyone as player. Number 45. one <laughs> passes to number eleven. Mm-hmm. What's Zion's number one? Huh? Yeah. 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 Hmm. Guys with that number one. It's a great number. It's a great mm-hmm. number. It's a great, it's a great number. Warren Moon. Yeah. Cam Newton. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When when he <laughs> when he runs up and down the court, dude. He is so imp- like he is so fucking thick. He is. His massive. legs are fucking tree trunks. I mean, thick. listen to this show. Listen to this show. <laughs> We've talked about him what six, seven different times. <laughs> yeah. He just can't. He's like uh, you can't not talk about him. He's like killers everything- kill too yeah. is what he said. Yep. He's the mm-hmm. next one, man. He is. I can't wait to watch him. Someone he- on TV was like, he's a top fifty player in the world right now. I'll go top fifteen. Top fifty. Who are they? Who are they putting wow. above him? Fucking I'm, Luke Cor, Cor- Kyle Corver. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> fucking Wally, the guy on the on the bench. He's not allowed to do anything either. If he was on that Murray State team running how Mur- uh, Jaw runs, mm-hmm. that dude's reckless with the ball. He he did a behind the back through the legs in the lane, shot up an air ball, and everybody's like, "Yep, that's that's Jaw." <laughs> it's like if Zion was to do that, he would get murdered and crushed. Yeah, yeah. Not that I don't think Ja is incredible, by the way. I think he's a very good basketball player. I just think he had one big night, and everybody's like, he's more NBA ready than Zion. I'm like, what are we talking about? I can't wait to watch Zion dominate. I have Duke win the national championship, miss layup away from not happening, Ooh. but I still think they run. I, I don't think they'll let it get that close again. I think Duke, that's a wake-up call to superstars. You know what I mean? Yeah, you need a, you need a close one like that to kind of shake the cobwebs out, get them ready. Win the yeah, next one yeah. by 60. Mm-hmm. And they yeah. will because they play Virginia Tech. Mm-hmm. Very vulnerable. They're going to thrash. Them. Already yeah, played. Virginia Tech's in a bad spot. ACC, yeah. 
Virginia has a kid with dyed blonde hair, uh, yep. African American guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's good. Very I'm a big good. fan of the way he plays basketball. I've n- I haven't seen him play. I don't think he's this big dude underneath though. He seems to be athletic and agile too. I like the way he plays. I like the way Virginia plays basketball. They got a big white guy who's super athletic too. Yeah. North Carolina has a new Hansboro. Yep. Uh, Luke May. Luke May. May. Yep. Luke May. Oh, yeah. Kind of. Uh, I think he even wears thirty. No, he wears thirty five. Hansboro was what thirty two. Uh, mm, I think I think he, Hansborough was fifty, and he is oh, actually oh, yeah, thirty-two. Right I think yeah, you're yeah. right. So he's he th- is thirty-two. You're right on. So that, I'm wrong about right. that. But yeah, he looks like just a Hansborough. Looks he's like a new Hansborough. Yeah. yeah, but he's talented, mm-hmm. hard worker. But if they meet in a national championship, it's tough for me to believe that Tyler Hansborough is going to beat Zion. <laughs> <laughs> Zion it's just tough for me to believe. What's the only thing that could happen? Zion get in foul trouble. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. the or a shoe blows out. There's or, always that too. Mm, or, potential, or yeah. they go just like historically cold from the field, yeah. which could happen. Yeah, can't hit anything. Yeah, could happen. And that's what it come down to is what kind of help does Zion get? Because UNC is fucking well, fucking rounded. Like, oh, hey, yeah. Kobe White, that kid. I love him. What's up with the pink shoes? What are we doing with the pink shoes? That just started and then they just kept doing He's it. He's had them for a long time this season. Every time I've there's like four of them though. Mm-hmm. There's like three or four of them they have it on. That's my. T- I love that team so much. I like his hair. I like the way he chucks up threes too. I like the way he. Yeah. Played. That UNC team is awesome to watch as well. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm happy I'm getting to watch them. Uh, now, since I don't pay attention, Correct. I sent that tweet out and it was real. I have not watched one college basketball game. I'm betting on all of them, <laughs> <laughs> which is a you wild are. move. You but are. it is nice to learn about these teams <laughs> everybody's been talking about. And Michigan State, that moment that I got mad about yep. because he chews out a kid during a TV timeout, that kid goes on to miss a dunk just a couple moments later. Mm-hmm. Because his confidence is rattled, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then we missed the second half over by two fucking points. Yes, Ugh. because ah, the kid yes. missed the dunk is why I was mad at Izzo. Mm-hmm. But if we go to that Tom Izzo situation, that was a perfect sociological situation for the world that we live in right now. It was a time for everybody to show whether or not they're old school. Or not. It was a grandstanding situation for everybody like, back in my day, this is what we did. This isn't this. Everybody and their mom had to prove whether they're old school or if they're new school. Everybody had an opinion on it. Everybody, It was under a microscope. It was huge. I will say that I have come from a tree of hard coaching, very hard coaching that's demanded a lot out of players. I believe, just like Scott Van Pelt, that there's other ways to do it. I am personally only pissed off because that kid missed a dunk. (laughs) (laughs) And the under hit, I don't mind how Tom Izzo handles his business. I just hated how it became something on the internet where everybody had to prove how old school they were or everybody had to prove how they wanted to evolve and change the way things are. That's the only thing it became. The situation didn't even matter anymore. The only thing that mattered was whether or not you came from a generation of hard coaching or if you're from the new school. It just it was a dumb grandstanding situation and quite a case study to watch it and was. learn about a lot of humans. Because that was classic old school coach yep. move. Yep. That's exactly. so Do- to new generation kid. Yep. So Dockich obviously goes out and says like oh, this is what coaching. Colin Cowherd mm-hmm. goes on his grandstand. Scott Van P- everybody who's old school or respects the old school thing felt the need to come out and talk about it. And then which caused on the other side for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. reaction. Exactly. So then there's the new school people that all felt like they had to come out and talk about it. And for me it just all became a big peacock in operation. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't give a goddamn. They won the game. Let's keep it moving. He didn't hit the kid. They won the game. Yep. Let's move forward. And nobody's right. Nobody's wrong. Let's just go for it. And now, now everybody thinks you have to be right or have to be wrong. Don't you feel like saying. everything has turned into that now? Everything. Everything, everything you have to be right. Did you hear how wrong. Izzo responded to it in his press conference? Oh yeah, I loved it. Loved it. Next game, by the way. Minus six in rebounding at halftime. Ended up, I think you were plus 15 in the second half in rebounding. How did you make that happen? How did they get, how did, uh, how, which players allowed that to happen for you? I imagine some challenging went on. No, no, no. We went in the halftime. We had a love fest. We hugged each other and said, listen, it's okay, guys, that we, we got out rebounded by a smaller team. Uh, you know, it's okay, but if we could find a way to do a little better job, it would, Probably help us win. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, incredible stuff by Izzo. I see why Michigan State loves him. Absolutely. But for me, 
A lot of people who never played a team sport were coming out talking about that, which happens on everything. A lot of people that have nothing to do with a lot of issues come out with their opinions because they've been taught by somebody else who has an idea that that's how they're supposed to feel. And everything's just peacocking these days. Everything's bullshit. Everything's bullshit. Mm -hmm. None of it matters. Even though I'm Nothing fucking school, matters right? except <laughs> for the four-point play by Zion. <laughs> to send them. And uh, first play of their next game after the kid got chewed out, very first possession of the game, he dunks the basketball. Oh, uh, yeah. good for him. Yeah. Yeah. So Two good. years from now, if he doesn't make it in the league, he'll write a book about Tom Izzo fucking <laughs> him. And then we'll come back to this whole thing. But what's up? I said, even though I'm very old school, I'm a big believer of Chew them out or me out as much as you want. Scream, spit, whatever. Tell me everything that you got in your arsenal. But then at the end, just give me a little pat on the butt and say, now yeah. get your fucking exactly. head right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the old sandwich. Like, yeah. It's like, the old sandwich. Kind of lean in, then the meat there, just go ahead and bury them, and then bring in another a little up, a little uppity thing. It's a, it's a little exactly. sandwich of positivity right. with the burial in the middle. Right. Just so they can leave a little bit with... Oh, he's a nice guy. Right. We're still family. Oh, we're on the same team. Yeah, it didn't seem as if that was the case. Oh, no, no, not at all. But I've been yelled at on a very regular basis. Yeah, your coach was uh, pretty much the epitome of yeah. old school. On right? a very regular basis, I've watched people get yelled at, and players react differently to things. I still think that um, like parenting and timeouts don't work. I don't, I don't, I, like in my Agreed. head, I, I not, maybe not with everybody, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think timeouts are the answer to a lot of things. I think it is actually a problem causer more so than a problem solver. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be an interesting thing. That's why I don't have kids and that's why I won't coach it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Hey, yeah, you did great. Yeah, you fucked the entire team. <laughs> you did great. That's basically what Tom Izzo was saying, mm -hmm. but in a more passionate manner. For sure. But I, it became a big peacock fest and I just can't take it. I just can't take it. I had um, to help uh, Bailey hang uh, a curtain rod at his house, at his apartment. So this is for, great. For Here Smith, we go. Right. So I go in there and I do it, and he's freaking out, right? Because we, we first we put in it was lower on one side, so now there's going to be a hole that shows, right? So he's all freaking out. He's getting flustered, whatever. And I'm all like, "Hey, just you know, calm down. It's not the end of the world. It'll be all right." Blah blah. And then finally, his girlfriend's like, "You're pissing me off right now. Will you stop?" And I go, "Actually." This is exactly how I react if this is my house. Like he's <laughs> like, but it's his apartment now. We're really giving Bailey has a girlfriend? Yeah. yeah uh -huh. Good for him. Yay! Yay! Look at you. Yay! Yay! Look at him. Look at Bailey. Good for him. <laughs> he's in a room. We can't see him. <laughs> you can't hear us either, I don't think. But look at Bailey. Look at him. It was totally me looking in the mirror, dude. I'm like, I fucking act like an asshole all the time <laughs> when I'm trying to put shit together or I'm trying to, because I, I, I'm i so OCD, I can't stand for my walls to get fucked up. And whenever I come, like whenever somebody wants, because it's always a girl, wants to hang curtains, <laughs> like why can't we just go with blinds or whatever? Or the curtain rods that are tensioned in between the windowsill where I don't have to screw anything <laughs> into the wall. We have options. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, I know, we have a lot of options. <laughs> they were low, low, low they home ornate, wrought iron, all that shit. And I, I just, it is the hole still showing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah. I, I wish I had that OCD to like how shit looks. I don't but care. it's a nightmare. I just, I don't, me it's too. nice to just not give a fuck. Yeah, it's <laughs> really, really nice to not give a fuck. That, how, that first house I lived in, man, there was just piles <laughs> of clothes that I would take out of a suitcase, put down, and then I would travel with an empty suitcase, <laughs> buy the clothes from Target, come home with them, dump them in, my, in different rooms. There was just different piles. They're like... Uh, what's this from? Oh, uh, my. Let me see. Yeah, it's Miami. Uh, what's this? Mm, Morocco. <laughs> what's this one over here? Well, you you check that. You might see some grit stuff from New York City. And that <laughs> Just piles everywhere. My mom was like, "This place is a joke." <laughs> it's a roof over my head, mom. <laughs> and I'm it's buying a fine. motorcycle because <laughs> I couldn't buy a motorcycle under my mom's roof. Mm -hmm. yep. So I bought one. <laughs> Speaking of, how's the scooter gang? Well, we're getting there. I believe we're now Pub Patrol is what we're rolling with. And we have a parking lot right in front of our office. Yep. Shout out Christopher Heyer putting a sign up there this morning. We have a lot of people with zero awareness who walked right past it, didn't even see it. <laughs> kind of kind of an interesting situation, actually, learning about folks. But there is a sign for the Pub Patrol mm -hmm. Currently mounted on a wood frame yep. right in front of our office on the side. Just need scooters. That's just it. need 
Just need patrols. That's so right. if yeah, you're a member of the pub and you have a scooter or you rent a scooter, you can park it there? You yeah. Park it, uh, I think I think the – actually, actually, I do believe the sign says uh, board members only for, this, for the pub board patrol. Board members. That's what the uh, little asterisk there was on the bottom. We would let all pub members park there. However, it are says gonna, – Are you going to organize like pub patrol rides and stuff? This oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we might have a couple pub patrols oh, and a couple oh, pub oh, brothers. Like, like do a little poker run but with scooters? Mm-hmm. Go from – Bar bar. Hey, I want to start a uh, poker room for Pat McAfee Foundation. Oh, Ooh. that would be great. People so, would dig it. So when I was on um, substance of abuse uh, policy. In the program? Yeah, program. There it is. But because of the policy. Yeah, right. When I was in there for 27 months getting tested eight times a month randomly, <laughs> because having to report to a <laughs> fucking guy every time I left Indianapolis, I had to find things to do. That was fun while sober. So what did I lean on? Like, okay, what did I do whenever I was just a young little high school kid? What was and it was poker. So I looked around Indianapolis and they had these this like poker hall at a Knights of Columbus. Mm-hmm. Where I used to play. Wow. So I go in there and they have thirty tables set up, real cash game, cop in the front. They have an, like two cops in the front. You walk in, you check in with cash, you get chips, you check out, you leave. I'm like, how? I, I the first time I went in there, I asked, I was like, how is this legal? And they're like, there's a cop right there. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I, I get that, but how is this legal? And they're like, well, it's for a foundation. Yeah. And sure. they just rake from the pot. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, that's awesome. I was cleaning up in these poker games. <laughs> Nobody had a clue who I was at this time. I would wear a hoodie in there, and I was cleaning up in these games. Then there was another one up in an American Legion up on the north side of town. I started going to these like pretty regularly. I'm like, oh, this is a pretty good little time They're here. fun. Three, four hours doing you're playing poker. It's a long time. It's not just a quick blackjack. Right. You're there for a long time. So um, my lady who gives me massages, uh, her name is Jen. I met her at the poker room. So they had massage therapists at this poker room, just like in Vegas where you tip a couple of chips. And I met her at the poker room and I was like, do you do this like for real? And she was like, yeah, this is just like during the day. And then I'll, so she became like my sports massage therapist lady, oh, cool. strictly from this poker game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now she's still with me, by the way, she still works. I've been getting back into a little bit of activity, which is going to be a great story someday, but I've been getting a bit more active. So the muscles need, and I was chatting with her and we, my lady, uh, also, it was a couple's massage, and we started like reminiscing and talking about. It. I was like, "Wait, how do they get that license?" And they're like, "Well, you have to be a foundation in the state for five years, and then once you do that, you just get a casino permit to basically for your foundation as long as it's a five hundred one c three or whatever." I was like, "Boom, Pat McAfee Foundation is five hundred one c three. I love poker. Uh, we've been here for five years. We can do that." And she was like, "Yeah, I don't see an issue at all." I'm like. Oh, we're going to run a fucking poker hall. Nice. Let's go. Okay, That's so awesome. I, I think I'm going to put my dad on that next. After the golf outing, awesome. I'm going to sure. put him yeah. on uh, on uh, poker hall. Nice. Hey, Tim. Hey, poker hall. Yeah. 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 yeah, so I think we're going to run like a poker hall. People M- really in. dig that. Maybe That's once a, a month. Maybe once a month yeah. or I get it. That was a good poker Literally. pun. All in on that. Didn't mean to. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, that brain does magical things over there. I'm excited for that. And I think it ties into the story of everything, too. Very much so. Were you at Blackjack in that poker? That's what I'm saying. Can't. A Blackjack in the can you I can't? love a, an entire. I so. Yeah, you can have a Monte Carlo night if you're oh, a charity. You can't have- a full Monte Carlo. You have a craps table. Same permit. Same permit, yes. by the way, if it is Roulette. that. They just happen to do it two times a week at Knights of Columbus. They're just raking. Yeah, can we do craps, roulette? Can we do it all? Can we just have an entire casino in there? I played, uh, I played blackjack at a Knights of Columbus. This is years ago. This is the racket. They took all ties. House took all ties. That's tough. Hey, hey. It's for a foundation. I know. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You Christ. can't bitch hey, at it. Good hey, hey, foundation. Like, oh, Ain't no God, pushes. You know? Hey, no. there's a lot of... there's a, The poker hall, by the way, those guys that were playing, they traveled all the games. Like I started seeing guys at every... And women at every single game. I think you just had another one. You just get another one. It's. Did I, you I, make poker friends? I did. Lisa Sears, uh, stand-up comedian. Yeah. I, I met her at a poker table one night. And it was, <laughs> uh, it was hilarious. She was very funny at yeah. the table. She was sitting right next to me. I cleaned that table out. <laughs> every chip at that table was with me. So, and I was there to the, not everyone, but yeah, I mean, pretty much. I had a couple, I had to run a cards there that was just next level. <laughs> and she was next to me just talking shit the entire time. 
And she was very funny. I was like, hey, you're a hilarious person. You know that? And she's like, I hear it all the time. And I was like, uh, I was like, why don't you do comedy? You ever do comedy? She's like, no, I'm scared to do that. I was like, oh, just get on a fucking stage. Just get on a stage and just act like this. You'll be funnier than most people. And she has gone on to do yeah, that. Yeah, you, you got her up for her first time on stage she, at your show. She's literally nice. gone on to do that. Yeah. So I met her at a poker room and she has gone. She's now a stand-up comedian here in Indianapolis. Huh. Very nice person. Good. Yeah. Person. So I would consider her a poker friend. Other than that, I didn't want anybody to know who I was. I don't want anybody to know who I am. I don't want anybody to know anything. Look in my head, I imagine like someone calling you. We have a game up here on Seventy First Street. You should come on down here. <laughs> that used to happen when I was a rookie. I played in some very, very, very large games. I don't even know if I should be saying this. I had like thirty-seven thousand dollars in a uh, shoebox underneath my bed <laughs> wow. okay. in a Jeez. terrible apartment in Indianapolis. Wow. My brother was my roommate. And I had no idea what else to do with it. I was taking like, I took like the rapper photo, you know, where they have all like the hundreds laid out yeah, on the yeah. bed. Oh, yeah. Like I took that photo once and like sent it to one of my college roommates. He was like, what the fuck are you doing out there? And I'm like, bro, these poker games are insane. <laughs> I didn't spend a single NFL dollar my rookie year. Just poker Oof. money. Just poker money. That's awesome. Yeah, it was That's awesome. wild. I was doing well. <laughs> I was doing well. I was getting invited to big games though. Big games. Big games <laughs> with big name people at these games. <laughs> and there I was, just a young little whippersnapper, pretty high. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Banker. <laughs> I know you can get suits from Stevens, <laughs> but I'm going to take every one of those motherfucking chips right over there. Would uh, you ever do the World Series poker? I want to. I don't know if I have enough That's a lot of time, though, right? It is a lot of patience, I'm not a tournament right? player. I'm a cash game player. Mm -hmm. And I think anybody that plays cards understands what that means. I need to be able to get up and go if I have to. Right. Because I am not scared to walk away from a casino up. I think that is one of my one of my strengths. Strengths is the ability to walk away from a casino when I'm up. If we get hot at a blackjack table when I'm up, I'm not scared to leave that casino. If you're, we're you're rare. Yes. Yes. I do believe it is a real feat to be able to do that. And I think if you're with me, you'll be on the same page. I like kind of force people to leave. It's like, yo, these things aren't fun coupons. Like we're supposed to leave with them. We're supposed to go to the cashier. I have the ability to walk up and leave in those tournaments. You have to just fucking withstand free. Yeah. And I'm an active guy. I'm an active guy. I like to make moves. You can't do that in the tournaments. You're going to get busted. Speaking out. of not spending your football money and going out while you're on top. Rob Gronkowski walks away. Hey, I'm pumped uh, for Rob Gronkowski, mm -hmm. by the way. I wrote this entire speech. I was going to do like, um, like, you know how the professional broadcasters, mm -hmm. they like do those things where they talk into cameras where they have a teleprompter and they're reading a um, prepared speech about right. something that somebody else wrote and then they clip it and put it on the internet. Right. Basically what anybody you see on ESPN, Fox Sports 1, yeah. NBC does, anything like that. Cookie cutter. Yep. I wrote one about Gronk. Here we go. All right. Okay. Here we go. When you shoot something into a trash can, you say... Kobe. When you pray on one knee, you... Tebow. And when you spike a ball, you... Gronk. Gronk. That some bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Gronk changed the game. Was he hurt? And did he get hurt? Yeah. He was a massive target. Got hit often. Also, his body wasn't supposed to be able to do the shit that his body does. He looked like a graceful Clydesdale out there. <laughs> Nimbility and truckability all in one. The body's not meant for both. That happens. But when he was on the field, he was the greatest of all time. Folks will measure Antonio Gates' numbers against his, which is cool. Antonio Gates is an incredible player, the former Kent State basketball stud who has become a Hall of Fame football player. And nobody could have guessed it. But here's something I can guess, though. If Gronk chose to play for longer, he could attain those numbers as well. He's going out after a championship and with a wildly confident future plan. Last year, when he thought about retiring, his agents came out in front of it and said he's thinking about pursuing a lucrative acting career. Whatever Gronk does, he's going to dominate, and I'm here for it. Even though any potential football TV job I was up for is now definitely gone, <laughs> I'm still here to watch the Gronk succeed because I think he did it his way. He did it very well, and he took care of his family while doing so. So I am nothing but proud of what Rob Gronkowski, Western Pennsylvania high school graduate, did in the NFL and will continue to do for the rest of his lifetime. Hey, not bad. Hey, let's go. Very good. Very good. Very good. That's going to fire him up. All right, let's clip that. Mm -hmm. Put like a little logo in the corner. <laughs> Perfect. Be basically, as if it just came from a main network. Yeah. Yeah, see you on ESPN tomorrow morning. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> That's basically what that was, though. Uh -huh. That yeah. is a. I, I thought it. But you wrote it yourself. Correct. See that? From the heart. From the heart. And that last line, very true. Very, very true. true. Very true. Yeah. Gronkowski will take <laughs> any potential TV job I was up for. He'll have to turn it down. 
Uh, we'll see what happens. Best ever to play a position? Yeah, I think so. I don't think, even think it's arguable at this point. Like you said, when he's on the field, best he's, ever He's the best player. Did he get hurt? Yeah, because mm-hmm. he did things that bodies aren't supposed to do. He took hits that you're not supposed sure. to take because Nimbility he's so big. Nimbility and truckability was... Mm-hmm. Nimbility yeah. and truckability, <laughs> real thing. Yeah. He was a graceful Clydesdale out there. He's not supposed to be. I, I, and if he was to play for another 10 years, you'd be able to acquire all those numbers, whatever. He, no problem. Even if it was five, six games a year, he'd be able to get it at some point, especially with Tom Brady. People will say he had the greatest quarterback of all time. I agree, but I don't think that team is the greatest team of all time if you don't have a playmaker that changed the game completely which is what rob gronkowski did he opened everything up for everybody else because you had to take care of him the safety had to sit in for rob gronkowski because he was faster than your linebacker he was bigger than your linebacker and he had better hands than most slot receivers i think he's the greatest to ever do it i honestly think he is and the fact he loved to party i mean let's not throw that aside (laughs) yeah i'm a big fan of the ability to do that too because we live in an age now where people are counting calories counting how much their heart is beating their heart rate is this you got to do this. You got to take this rep off. Gronk just worked out, ate weights, <laughs> and partied. <laughs> Which is I think that his way. and you did it his, his way. way. Yep. And that is literally why I think Gronk is the greatest of all time at his position. There's a lot of people that will argue for other people because they played longer, which I think is awesome. Congratulations. But I don't think there's anybody like Gronk. And I think everybody who played tight end that watched Gronk knew that as well. Like, I think if you ask Gates and he watched Rob Gronkowski's film, he'd be like, Phew. I can't do what that motherfucker does. Mm-hmm. I think he, what people what gets overlooked too is how good of a blocker he was. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. like so physical, yeah. so dominant. I watched him fucking um, kick a guy out of the club against us. Yeah, yep. uh, you know, I'm at the club. Well, li- literally drove him into the stands in an NFL arena in an NFL state. Yeah, it was yes. Sergio Brown. <laughs> Sergio, because Sergio broke his forearm on a field goal <laughs> rep. He was on the field goal team at one point. There's another thing. <laughs> Rob Gronkowski was on the field goal block team at one point. Wow. That is not something that your star player is supposed to do. He did it. Broke his forearm. Didn't do it again after that. <laughs> but it was just, it, I think Gronk changed the game. I think he did. I think he, I think he really did change offenses. He's a gold standard. He helped out a lot of big white people. Like, you all look at the big white motherfuckers now that are coming in yep. the league as tight ends. Like, they all are George thinking. George Kittle. Oh, yeah. Like you mentioned earlier. Kelsey, now. Kittle, you name it. Big white guy playing tight end. They all, I assume, watch Gronkowski's film sure. and wanted to be him. Shout out to Gronk, though. Lucrative acting career. <laughs> Good for him. Sure, he's going to be fine. He's, he's got to be very pigeonholed in his acting career. Yeah, but listen. Yeah. I, I said this earlier. Batista, okay, any WWF, WWE fan knows Batista isn't the greatest speaking, okay? He's a specimen. He's incredibly athletic. But as a speaker, which is what acting normally involves, yeah. he's not. he wasn't the best. <laughs> he finds a role as, what's his name? Drax. Drax. Mm-hmm. Who, not a lot of speaking, but incredible lines. Funny guy. And now he's a very mega successful actor. Oh, yeah. Does a lot of movies, yeah. I assume there's going to be a role for Gronk somewhere, somehow, written by somebody, and Gronk will crush it. He's perfect in a certain genre of action movies. I mean, mean, Dolph Dolph Lundgren, all those people, like, he'll have that kind of career at... Least I think Gronk's gonna crush. Yeah, I think the I think Gronk is gonna crush. I honestly do. Shaq had all those little cameo roles and things like that. He can't Mm -hmm. talk. Wow. Do you oh, ever really? wow. Shaq, dude? Wow. Have you wow. seen TNT? Have you yeah. seen Blue Chips? Bro, come on, Shaq on TNT. Uh, yeah. Cause Cause have, hey, Shaq Schumer is incredible. <laughs> yeah. I like Shaq. Yeah. By the awesome. way, there's another guy I like that fucking Nick just saw that. <laughs> <laughs> He's hey, the whole point. <laughs> hey, Shaq's on the board of uh, Papa John's. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Good, <laughs> big move by him. <laughs> I get what you said there. Cause <laughs> Big money, I'm assuming. Ah, uh, he yeah, has yeah, to, yeah. man. Yeah. Ain't nobody buying that pizza, though, just because Shaq's going <laughs> Good business move by Shaq, bro. Good business move. We interrupt this conversation going nowhere to tell you that <laughs> <laughs> today's a wild show. Yeah. <laughs> when you're constantly on the go, grinding away at the office like us or just hanging out with your friends also like us, there's not much time to think about upgrading your style or apartment. Mm, you're right. That's true. Good point. We're going to get into a conversation about that, about how I don't, I, I don't have time to get out and, and do things. Mm-hmm. But I'm very lucky to have a company that watches my back. Because there's one company that wants to upgrade everything in your life, and that is a box of awesome from Bespoke Post oh, that yeah. delivers every yeah, month. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good box. Bespoke Post is out scouting for quality and unique products to send in each box. Now you can experience it too at boxofawesome.com. 
To get started, visit Box of Awesome. Dot com and answer a few short questions that will help them get a feel for the boxes that will best go with your style. Whether you're in search for the perfect drink, a well-kept pad, or jet setting in style, Bespoke Post improves your life one box at a time. Mm-hmm. Only way to do it. Each box goes for under 50 bucks, but has more than $70 worth of unique gear waiting inside for you. That's you do deal. the math, that's more than a $21 profit. Mm-hmm. Wow, Ooh, that's good math. That's awesome. You're giving me money now. The first of each month, you'll receive an email with your box details. They'll say, hey, you, here's what our box of awesome is coming to you this week. You have five days to put your thing down, flip it, and reverse it. Change colors and sizes or add extra goods to your box. If you're not feeling that month's box, then simply skip it. From barrel aging kits to limited edition cigars, weekender bags to classy dop kits, Bespoke Post offers essential goods and guidance for the modern man. I will say this. All those words that I just stated there... Might not have meant much to me before these boxes of awesome showed up at the office. But now we have a decanter out there with a couple oh, glasses. Yes. I have a travel bag. Bespoke Post is like signing up for Christmas for you every single month. You don't even remember that you signed up for it until you get that email. And then it shows up at your door and you're like, look at this box of Awesome. awesome. To receive 20% off your first subscription box, go to boxofawesome.com and enter code Heartland at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code Heartland for 20% off your first box. Bespoke post. Theme boxes for guys that give a damn. Twitter's going to change everything. How do we feel about the blue caption thing at the bottom of the videos? It's, I don't it's growing I don't like on it. me. It's, it's growing weird. on me. I don't love it. I think it's so whenever people take videos and post them, like tweet video, that the original caption gets down. Is that why? Yeah, I don't probably. Know. I don't know. So like is it sense. you take you take the video and then you just put the caption in normal and then it puts it in at the at the bottom? Well, now they kind of just filter you right to it. Like you, no matter what you say, it just goes right to the blue caption thingy. I don't know if I like it. I don't because I couldn't figure out how to reverse it. I wanted to like reverse it and there's no bar for you to just like, oh, I want to go back and watch it. Yeah, they this. loop, right? Yes. I didn't like that. But it's definitely also so if you take it and put it on like Instagram or something like that, that you know it's from Twitter. Uh, ah. Oh. It's like TikTok has that. I thought it made it look like, like a meme. TikTok has their shit branded on the. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because when you caption a video now, you have to make it more meme than an actual caption. That's so what I thought. So for me, for Twitter videos, like, the caption's a huge deal because you're setting up the video. Mm-hmm. Now they've kind of taken that away. You can only have a certain amount of words on there. Uh, By the way, you meme and son of a bitch, you. Oh, that hey! Was that, was <laughs> that, was meme. that was a great meme, too. Hey! It was good. Hey! <laughs> That's a feeling, too. That was on Saturday, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was after I did the dump into the hot tub. Or no. No, oh. Friday. It was right. a f- yeah, it was Friday. It was when Duke covered. No, Saturday. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday morning. Yeah. You FaceTimed me. It was yeah, Saturday, Saturday oh, yeah, morning. Oh, yeah, you did do it Saturday. That was yeah, after, after I dumped the um, all the, the coolers into the thing. <laughs> yeah, I made a meme. <laughs> I did it on IG Story. Good for you. Uh, there. Gotcha. Yeah, a hell yeah, yeah. of a meme. Did the thing. It was real. And then that's the feeling when your buddy hits a backdoor cover. Yeah, you jump. You're excited for Hey, good for you, man. <laughs> I lost all my bets today. <laughs> <laughs> good for you sneaking one in to fuck the big guy. Good for you. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that yeah, that blue caption thing. I don't yeah, like it. I, I mean, I think I got to learn it, but I'm not a fan of it early here. And not everybody has it. So when I referenced it on a tweet, a lot of people are like, what do you even mean? I'm like, just wait. That motherfucker's yeah. coming. <laughs> Whenever you update your thing, it's coming. I don't like that Jack doesn't use his experimental show on me either, by the way. I feel like I should be a top 10 guy that gets it. Yeah. I feel like I'm pretty active. I drive, think so. I think I drive a lot of action to your little website, Jack. Mm-hmm. A little fucking thing. Pat, try this out for me. Give me some feedback. It's like 280 characters. I f- I, everybody else in the office had it except for <laughs> me. That was ridiculous. Oh, everybody in the office had it except for me. When point. your brother came out and said he had it. <laughs> my, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> hey, Jack. <laughs> I would like to talk to Jack. You should. Jack is not one of the founders of Twitter. I think he's the new CEO. I don't think Jack's an original founder. I think it's a new team in there. He put and out okay. the first tweet. That that guy, right? Jack. That Jack. Yeah. I don't think so. I think he, he's not Jack Tom? Dorsey. He's not Tom MySpace. Jack Twitter. Oh, good photo. Good profile photo. No, I think Jack is a new guy that's been brought in. Uh, I think. I don't know Twitter like you guys know Twitter, but I thought he was one of the. Uh, yeah, he was one of the founders. Oh, Jack was. Yeah, him, and then three other guys. What happened to the other guys? Uh, dead. Dead. <laughs> <They're all> dead. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, Jack took them so out. Squeezed them out. He might have, man. He might have Zuckerberg that thing. I don't know. Jack is the end all be all though up there at Twitter. He's really taking the face of the whole thing. I'd like to talk to Jack about what they thought it was going to be versus what it is now, how they're utilizing it. I think that'd be a good conversation. Joe Rogan had him on, but 
I don't know if Rogan utilizes Twitter as much as I do. Right. Twitter is my avenue of everything, basically. I wish I would have focused on YouTube, to be honest. I should have focused on YouTube. There was a little run there where I made like three videos for YouTube. And I was like, this is going to be my thing. YouTube's going to be my thing. And I think I would have got paid off in the end a lot yep. more than having a Twitter. Eh, but hindsight's 50-50. There you go. Mm-hmm. You never know. Can't Everyone knows that. that. Different crowd. Yeah, but I think I would have adapted. I mean, 140 characters was a different way of speaking and communicating. And I figured it out. I just I shouldn't have focused on Twitter. I should have went to the Instagram. I should have went to the Instagram a little bit earlier. I should have bought that Bitcoin that was offered me. <laughs> <laughs> and I should have focused on the YouTube. And the Magnificent Maximus. Oh, Nets. Oh, Don't bring that um, up. Sam signed us up for an Argon thing <laughs> in New York City when we were there for WrestleMania week. Oh. It was a heartbreaker. Oh, man. <laughs> she wouldn't tell me. She wouldn't tell me. She was like, are you free on this day? I was like, yeah, I actually think I am. She's like, okay, I'm going to set up a day for us to like, because my brain's been going a lot, right? So she's trying to make me relax a little bit more. So she's trying to get me to do things that are relax. I guess there's like these... Uh, like ancient baths in New York City. Oh, yeah, the bathhouses. Nice, nice boy. Nice fits. And I guess they're supposed to be like a very relaxing thing where you just like disappear in some water. And now that I don't have the hole in my eardrum, I mean, I could do this thing, you know what I mean? And one of them is like an argon splash or whatever. <laughs> so whenever she told me we were doing a sanctioned bath, I was like, what the fuck does that even mean? She was like, oh, you get in there with different minerals and different things. It does things. I was like, oh, so what's the one we're getting in? She's like, well, I mean, it could be a variation of things. I was like, oh, so we're just signing up to jump into a bunch of fucking shit? She was like, no, you have different ones to pick. I was like, which one do we pick? She was like, Argon. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know that I know the guy <laughs> that sold all the Argon nuts <laughs> to all of the ancient bath places. <laughs> In all of America, mm-hmm. my yeah. guy. I can't believe I missed that one. That's that's one of the situations where I wish I didn't drink alcohol. Whenever I had the plug for all the Moroccan argon, argon nuts. He guy's probably a multi-billionaire oh, at this I point. Even Easily. They're not cheap. They don't sell that stuff for cheap. Well, you got to get them from Morocco. Yeah. It's not easy to get there. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you at least you never know. What if, what if he was the wrong guy? What if he was yeah. like the Betamax guy compared he to VHS? He wasn't. I'm just trying to help you. He was MP3. (laughs) He was everything. He was the guy. I know he is. I can already tell because the way he talked, the way he dressed, he was the most like um, business savvy of the Argon nut people. (laughs) And when he looked me in my eye, I think he thought that we were going to really take over the world. And one of us was right. (laughs) That was him, man. Lost his contact information. I still have nightmares of that little piece of paper in my back pocket. Just a little loose leaf ripped with his phone number. Five period seven something. <laughs> four one eight <laughs> sixteen. He's Muhammad or something. <laughs> Could have been me, man. Oh nuts. Is that, is that oh, come on. Well, I'm just oh, trying to lighten geez. it up a little bit. Was that a head joke? Uh, uh, that was just strawberry nuts. Unbelievable. <laughs> McAfee's magic nuts. They would have been everywhere. <laughs> they had goats climbing trees for the nuts. That was their big sales pitch. Oh, I like that. On like a, it, was, it was on like a slideshow, but manual one. Sure. <laughs> you know, where they have the... You got to put the projector? slides in the little tray and it goes around in a circle. No, it's pieces of paper that open up like a oh. binder oh. where you like flip them. Very oh. old school. Interactive? Yeah, no, no. It wasn't interactive. It was his sales pitch to our group about what how good these things are. Like a before picture of a lady and then after she used the argon oil on her face, Slide she looked show. like she was 12. Yeah, but it was a handheld one where you, the... <laughs> It was a flip. It was like a flip binder, like a flip. Uh, the pieces, the pictures were inside. Um, the trapper keeper. What are you yeah, it was like that. But um, yeah, the uh, like lamination. Lamination, like oh. the uh, like velcro. The no, it's overhead. It's yeah, velcro. Uh, it's the clear. You are the nowhere lamin- near the same page as the clear me. Clear stuff that you slide a paper. In. Yeah, the clear yeah, thing that you clear put the folder. The yeah. clear laminate. Yeah, laminate. Yeah, yeah. yeah they laminate. He had pictures in, and he would flip to the next picture, and it was a picture of a goat climbing a tree, and he was like, "These are actual photos of people of the goats trying to get the argon nuts." You get a goat to climb a tree for a nut. It's a good nut. Yep, mm-hmm. I'm telling you, he was it's not easy for goats to climb trees. Well, now look where argon oil is. It's everywhere. everywhere. Argon oil is everywhere. Those goats weren't fucking lying. That would have sold me. Goats are actually great climbers. Yeah, they are. That, that on trees? Yeah. Everything. Oh, good for them. Goats can climb no up idea. the side of cliffs. They're like, like I knew yeah, that. Like the Ebix. It makes no sense to me. They have no opposable thumbs. They are four-legged bound creatures. Like I have no they idea have how they can just climb up the side. Well, of there's any tread on those. They Strong jump. hooves. They jump the grip. Well. They got yeah the grip. I know they jump well and can climb rocks because rocks are little crevices to put their hooves in. Oh. But a tree? Do they wrap their 
like legs around <laughs> and shimmy up. Yeah, they did. Yeah. I've seen cool in the act. I've only uh, seen the pictures of the aftermath. This is they incredible. Get up there. I didn't know this. this is, I'm oh, going to yeah. Google well, the fuck out I'll of this. I'll tell you what. He, he probably told me that they ate the argon nuts, and that's why they could climb trees. Because <laughs> <laughs> these argon nuts fix everything, I guess. And I missed it. I missed it. You're literally jacking the beanstalk. You got huh. these magic nuts. Hmm. Uh, a little far fetched. Beans. <laughs> <laughs> Dummy, bro. I had the content. I had the plug. I had the information. I should have been him. the nut guy. Wasn't meant to be. Wasn't oh, meant to damn. be. Uh-uh. Wow, Nick Meraldo to the rescue. Just showed you a photo of a goat climbing a tree. One, two, three, four. There's a dozen fucking goats in this tree. I, mean, I bet you that's an nuts. argon nut or tree. They get memes a lot. <laughs> Good a lot Lord. of memes with goats and trees. Is that an argon tree? Probably. Check it. It's probably in Morocco. It's just the athleticism of those beasts. It's the same photo. It is. It is an ar- argon oil. Checks yeah. out. Yep. Then wow. I can climb a regular tree. Yep. God. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm happy for that guy. <laughs> uh-huh. Put together that sludge, the flip book thing. Mm-hmm. That has to be the logo on the can of nuts, right? Is no, a bunch of goats in a tree? No, it's just the fact that it's a miracle nut. That's what everybody yeah. says. They're literally called the tree climbing goats of Morocco. <laughs> no goat. other country of nope. goats can climb. No. That's what the Argon nuts are. Fuck. And I was all in on this guy, by the way. There was other people that were in our group that weren't all completely sold by this guy. I thought he was just a used car salesman. They're like, used car salesmen uh, operate in different countries, too, Pat. I'm like, <laughs> did you see the motherfucking goats, though? Like, you can't, I don't think they <laughs> can Photoshop over here. I don't know if that's good enough Photoshop. <laughs> I see tree limbs in front of the goats. I don't know if this is Photoshopable. <laughs> they call me an idiot. What, what, do the vo- what do the goats get for this, though? The nut. Fucking the nut. The nuts. nut, bro. <laughs> they bust the nut. The I get, nut. I, I get that, but where's the oil come from? When they bust the nut. Oh, when they boy. chew the nuts. This is tough. The this oil is, this is tough to it watch. Is. This is. is tough to watch. It is. I don't know Aragon nuts. You you almost cornered the market. This is Aragon. new to me. This Aragon. is Lord of the Rings. Hey, hey, Ryan Hare I used to use for my hair. It's gorgeous. I just think the whole thing, if you're not taking care of the goats, <laughs> it's at spot. the end of the day, it's sad. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it. Thanks, you know, guys. I tried it. I tried it. I like it. I tried it. All right, Gorms. All right, Gorms. You want me to leave now? (laughs) No, no. No, no. Stay, man. Hey, on the social media front, though, Twitter is the most real. I think you did it right. Twitter is is the most. I think Twitter will last the longest. Uh, I think everything else will kind of come and go, like MySpace did, like the Facebook did. I feel like Instagram probably will come and go at some point because it's a younger generation. A younger generation will find a new platform. But I think Twitter is a good fallback for all generations. Facebook's old folks. Mm -hmm. Instagram's younger folks. Twitter seems to be where everybody kind of lives and watches live events, and I think it'll be good forever. I got a lot of real estate in there. Oh, yeah. A lot of real estate. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of real estate in there. I can kind of – it's – it's not easy, though, man. A lot of people are like, uh, oh, you have a big following because you were a punter in the NFL. Okay, go check every other punter in the NFL. <laughs> go check fucking wide receivers, too, if you want. Go check anybody. It was a lot of work. And just like that guy told me on that Delta plane where he had a Porsche drive him to the gate because he was on so many had so many miles with Delta. Mm-hmm. And I asked him, man, that's incredible. He's like, ah, it means I missed a lot of time with my kids. Twitter means that I haven't paid attention to a lot of real life conversations, strictly to do the Twitter conversations. You know, I mean, we're 1.5 million strong at this point, but what did it really get me that much? It hasn't really got me much. <laughs> hasn't really got me much. Should have focused on the YouTube. Should have saved the guy's number from Morocco. Yes. Mm-hmm. If we're to go back in, in time travel, the number for the nut guy probably <laughs> pretty high up there. Pretty yeah. high up there. <laughs> number. <laughs> Yeah. Probably Pro- grab that one. Probably go back in time, go ahead and seal that one, lock it the fuck in. Yeah, and laminate like, that. Hey, guys, listen. Yeah, laminate that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Put that in a binder. Yeah. But just get back on that boat and just wait till I get back to America. Don't party anywhere. Uh, that's probably number one. YouTube, focus on the YouTube. Probably, that's probably high up there as well. I, yeah. Hey, ba- Babe Ruth said it best. With every strike, I get one swing closer to my next home run. Oh. Hey. Hey, What's come on. Right? Hey, hey, all right. Hey, 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 Babe Ruth. Babe knows. Good candy bar. He also really loved whores. <laughs> <laughs> Big oh, whore guy. That he did. I'm glad we Big clapped. I'm glad guy. we clapped before yeah. you said that. That he did. Uh, <laughs> like them whores. <laughs> <laughs> we clapping her. <laughs> he was at least a couple times. <laughs> Hi, um. Hey, I still believe that there's a chance that he was pointing out of the park. To tell his ex-wife. Oh. <laughs> Get out. 
<laughs> you need to get the fuck out of here. Uh, <laughs> you just aim at a brothel. I'm going there after the game. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? Um, oh, China. What was the craft place called? Orchid. Orchid. You oh. see a China. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. You shouldn't laugh about that. It's human trafficking. Yeah, it's true. It's terrible. Robert Kraft, a terrible guy. But he can get out of it just by saying he was wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so how terrible of a guy is he? Yeah. Though the city is just trying to. Yeah. They're trying to get out of that one as bad as. Hey, the prosecutor said the video is coming out. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. that. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, it is. I think this is a mistake by Robert Kraft. Yes. From a tactical standpoint. Agreed. If that thing was just going to disappear by him saying, yeah, I fucked up. Because he ended up saying he fucked up anyways in Correct. that letter. Yeah. Yes. Right. He ended up saying he fucked up in that letter. And now they're still going through with it. It's like, yo, who's got, he's got that fucking Stormy Daniels agent oh, lawyer that's the, like, yeah, I got you, bro. We'll get the, out of this. I wonder public. if he's seen it. He Is it would he be able to see that nah. video? Uh, if you're going to trial, right? Yeah, don't they have yeah, to yeah, show you? Yeah, it's called production or discovery. But yeah. the court of public opinion was already out. Everyone always thinks you did it. So why not just plea guilty? Confess it's to a it and not minor let the violation. Wait, it, it's a video of him getting jerked off. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, and getting a blowjob. I think. Yeah, it's a uh, it's jerked off and sucked off. Two different things, but yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe he just has a big, you know what? Zito. And he just oh, wants to show it off. It out. Oh, <laughs> good for the resume. Watch the dirt this weekend. <laughs> Uh, speaking of big res with Tommy Lee. I'm wanting to see that. <laughs> is it good? Oh, people are saying it was better than Bohemian Rhapsody. Really? Wow. I didn't see Bohemian Rhapsody yet, but there's no fucking way. <laughs> there it's is no <laughs> way that the movie that I watched, The Dirt, is there's better no than... Way. I might have watched the wrong one. Was that about Molly Crew? <laughs> yeah. 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 I might have watched the wrong movie. I didn't finish it. I didn't get <laughs> through it. So that's... I mean, yeah, I don't but. have to say much more. I like that MG. I'm an MGK guy. I like that MGK was acting in there. Did a lot of spins of the drumstick, which is uh, incredible. I, I think I got to learn how to do that. It was a pretty cool thing. But there's no people are saying that that's better than Bohemian Rhapsody. I think I think those people should uh, uh, stop with opinions <laughs> for a little bit. I, it was an interesting movie. It was cool to kind of hear about how it all came to be and shit like that. It was cool for that. Nikki Six had a wild life, wild upbringing. Cut himself, sent his mom to jail. Spoiler alert. Oh. That's in the first five minutes. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. It's like a preview. But I don't think it's anywhere near Bohemian Rhapsody. Did you watch know. that movie? I watched The Dirt, yeah. It was interesting. It was a little braggadocious to me, but I guess you have to portray that when you're rock stars like they were. But it was just, I don't know. The way they told it was interesting, too. Each <sighs> character kind of like stop, freeze frames, looks at the camera, talks to the camera for oh. a little bit. I don't oh, like it's that. one of those. I don't like that. Uh, like the big short, kind of. I think you should watch it. I think you should watch it. I didn't make it all the way through, but I saw numerous people tweet that it was better than Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. I was like, okay, I liked Bohemian Rhapsody. I was on a plane ride to Hawaii. I guess that's why I liked it. Maybe this movie is good. And I turned it on within the first four minutes. I was like, this movie's better than Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> and then I got like 20 minutes in. I'm like, this movie ain't better than Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> and then 20 minutes more, I was like 40 minutes into it. Sam was like, are we done with this movie? I was like, I, I think we are. I <laughs> went back to I love uh, that move. a March Madness game. Yeah, it was like it was trying to be a break from college basketball because mm -hmm. I felt like I was just, you know, I was making them too much money watching literally every <laughs> single game. I was like, I feel bad for the kids here. But for the kids, I'm going to watch a movie on Netflix. <laughs> but you don't want a Motley Crue movie being better than a Queen movie anyway. Because no, you got to no. put, it's you know, it's uh, appropriate, I think, because Motley Crue, great band, but they're not Queen. Queen you know what no, I mean? Queen, are, that's yeah. legend. You're hey, they're legends. royalty. Yeah, they're royalty. Mo literally, okay. <laughs> hey! He's back. I missed that one. <laughs> My boy, Gorms. <laughs> Motley Crue is a pretty cool little style, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're great. Pretty cool little name, too, by the way. The old man who played the guitar was the one who thought of it. Mick Mars. There he is. Yeah. About 90 now. He comes off as an interesting character in the movie. Oh, yeah. I would assume that they had a great time from the movie I watched. A oh, great time. Yeah. A very good time. But the movie, I don't think it's... To say it was better than Bohemian Rhapsody is insane to me. And Blast I'm no movie, movie critic. I just... I think that was an insane move. Everybody's got different tastes, though. Everybody's got different tastes. Zeta likes shit that I don't like. Huh. True. What do you mean? Name uh, name a couple of movies that you like. Uh, Big Daddy. Love that movie. Billy Masson. Love that movie. Huh, we're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Zito will like any movie. Yeah. Zito's never seen a bad movie. Very optimist. Zito, I want to like... Optimism. 
Yeah, boy. Very <laughs> optimism. You're yes. very optimistic. <laughs> very optimistic. You're the most optimism person that I have ever <laughs> met. Thank you. There was a conversation this weekend about you that uh, I had with a couple of the guys there at Applebee's. There's a movie, a documentary. What's it called about the mom that drugs the mm. daughter? The, 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 act. Act. the act. The act. Munchausen the syndrome. What's that? Yes, that's Munchausen syndrome. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's what the Real disease thing. is. Where the mom wants the kid to have some sort of. She thinks, thinks that every so. like there's a ton of stuff wrong with her. Like mm-hmm. uh, like she has cancer. She can't walk. Can't uh, eat sugar. Can't eat sugar. Like she's diabetic. Nick said that's how Eminem's mom was. Mm-hmm. I guess right. Yep. This is the same type of thing. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And then if you remember in Talladega Nights, uh, Ricky Bobby thought he couldn't walk. Right. Yes. So in his head, he was convinced he couldn't walk. I said that I think we could convince Zito that he's paralyzed. I think if we all went for it (laughs) and we told Zito that he couldn't walk, that Zito somehow would believe that he was wheelchair bound. I think we could do it to Zito if we had to. I I said, I think that if we all even brought in like a fake doctor to tell Zito that he can't walk anymore, (laughs) Zito would hook, line, and sinker by right the fuck in. Am I wrong? Oh, you're so right. I think we could convince Zito that he couldn't walk anymore. Yeah, might be the easiest thing we've ever done. Yeah. You think Hill Z just breaks my legs? <laughs> <laughs> I just wake up from a blackout? No, I think it would be like Ricky Bobby where you just think you can't walk. I honestly think... That was my first thought when I heard about this. I was like, I, I think can we- see his ass rolling in here now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, they were, you guys were right. <laughs> can't use it. I thought we could... There's no convince- ramp outside. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we could convince you that. I still think we do. I mean, oh, I still think we could. We could uh, do abducted in plain sight on you as you as an adult. <laughs> like, we could set up. You wake up talking through a monitor. I am an alien. Start jerking everybody off. You would do it. You would do it. You didn't deserve that. Yeah. Hey, that jerk I respect off. it. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Optimism. The world's going to end. You're going to start jerking your roommates <laughs> off. Have you ever seen... Oh, easy um, talk. You would take a jerk off. He said roommates. It's kid stuff. No way. It's kid stuff, man. It's uh-uh. just kid stuff. Then he's to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> the pub is very friendly, but not like that. Have you ever seen, oh, fuck, what's the name of it? The Magic Movie. Woody Harrelson's in it. Oh, um, Catch Me. Oh, Catch Me. Yep. No, 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 now You See Me. Now You See Me. Yeah. Zudo, have you ever seen Now You See Me too? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you know that scene where they set up an entire the airplane scene around them? Oh, yeah. <sighs> I want to do that to people very bad. Yeah. So I'd fall awesome. for that one. Yeah, like you set up an oh, entire, love it. like a, uh, they set up a hospital, I think, a fake yeah. hospital. Yeah. Scene. Well, no, that might not have been. An airplane. Been that was in a different Yeah, that was an airplane. Yeah. What was the movie, though, where they Captain set up? Captain America, the first Avenger. Oh, oh, yeah. Also, Mission Impossible. There it is, yeah. the Tom Cruise yeah. yeah. one, yeah. where they set up With an the entire fake, fake hospital. Fake, yeah. fake news broadcast. Yeah, the yeah. news broadcast. I would love to do that. I, that seems like a great time. I'd fall for that. Oh, yeah. Well, you have to. Yeah, yeah. I, I often question the people that don't fall for things like that, that they're that elaborate, like what type of humans they are. Like, right. How do you, you must just be the most pessimistic human of all time. Because <laughs> you have a sure. doctor telling you something, a TV telling you something, and the room you're sitting in is telling you something. You're just like, yeah, fake. <laughs> do you ever think you're in the Truman Show? Every day of my life. Oh, me too. Am I? I? No. Okay. I can tell you that I am not a paid actor in your life. Okay. <laughs> Let's give you a cop. Yeah, Ooh. tell me. With a very, very straight face, I can tell you that. Uh, thank you. Connor, I'm not sure. Foxy, I'm not certain. They choose to be around you. Me, I'm forced to be here strictly because of our job, <laughs> not because of the You Truman know what show. I think Zeke's doing with his billion dollar money? What's that? He's running the Truman Show. You're my Truman We'd show. have no uh, idea. The Zeke Show. The Zeke Show. <laughs> That's what's happening right now. Zito is a billionaire. Yeah. For, for sure. sure. Yeah. I've never been more certain. No, I'm not. I think you are. I FaceTimed you this weekend. You're at home. And white you, wall. I chose a white wall behind me. You took a long time to answer it, which yeah. means you're like running somewhere. Normally, Zito will answer that thing as soon as it rings. Boom. Oh, hey, yeah. What? What's going on, Dyer? <laughs> <laughs> this one, he, I thought he was like, oh, he's not going to answer. And then he did answer. He was out of breath because he seemed to have run. I've gained some weight, though. I, and the that. lighting that was on the ceiling behind him was. Blinding some spots out. No, pretty expensive lighting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he went to a place. Somewhere very far away that Zito goes, oh, he's a, he won't know. And then I looked, and all I was doing was just looking in the background the entire time. Like, anytime a photo gets posted on the internet or video, you just look in the background. That's what I was doing, FaceTiming Zito, because I knew he was at his house. So I was like, yeah. trying to get some clues. I don't have to see my servants yeah, walking exactly. in the background. Exactly. He was shooting directly up, up too, yeah. which never happens. Zito is a, yeah. you, oh. anytime you FaceTime, you're shooting up. So they show a double chin. Hey, yeah, I saw a lot of Zito. <laughs> yeah. In B, I saw I the sacrificed. entire back. I was like, I think I'm even more convinced now that he's a billionaire. Maybe it's a green screen. Mm. 
You just fucking go to a green screen and FaceTime me? How do you drop that graphic in there? I don't know enough about tech. I don't know if that's even possible. Yeah, I, maybe for a billionaire. Huh? I heard from some sources this weekend. Uh-oh. Close to Zito. Hmm. You know, maybe... Uh, Was it Heels Eat? Maybe they grew up together. Maybe they attended some uh, activities together. Uh, I heard everything Zito has told us is a lie. What? Oh. Oh. Who said what? what? Who I said can't reveal it? the sources, obviously. What did they and, say? Was it Heels Eat? It was, was it not Heel Z. <laughs> it was not Heel Z. Was it, was, it, was it me with sunglasses on? There were some individuals that said, hey, big fans of the show, big fans of what you guys do, but we just want to let you know we grew up with Zito. Everything he told you was a lie. Zito! Wow. That's the most insane thing. Oh, my goodness. That makes wow. me feel like you're not a billionaire, though, if you had kids, <laughs> f- friends growing up. That kind of changes yeah. That kind of changes everything for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, not rich or not lying. I, I'll tell you what. Those people might be lying to Nick because sometimes people lie to me about what they did to Foxy in high school. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. very true. I mean, Foxy gets shit on in my DMs <laughs> oh, on a regular did. basis. What did I just? Am I easy target? What is it? Uh, I honestly don't know. Yeah, I think uh, that kid. He even admitted to saying. He just wanted to be on your Instagram story. Wow, and it worked. Oh, it worked. So I said, I respect that. You gotta respect the hustle. Yeah. You're saying you didn't get your ankles broke Hell by some no. little tiny white kid in Michigan? You see these ankles? Yep, that's why I agree. <laughs> <laughs> they are not getting broken. No, with Tom Izzo's defense. Exactly. That's the other thing. Grew up in the Lansing area. Back to the Izzo thing. Every coach in the Lansing area wants to be Izzo. Oh, so sure. every coach is a fucking hard ass. It doesn't work like Izzo. It doesn't. You need a resume. Exactly. Yeah, big resume. You need a resume. <clears throat> ankles didn't get broken. Yeah, they did. <laughs> I used to shave my legs and my arms because in soccer, I was, I don't want to say an asshole, but I was crafty and people used to pull the hair on my legs because I would do it to other people, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) So I don't think people really thought about doing it to me until I did it to them. For a reaction. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. A very equal. So if we're just, you know, if a guy is, if a guy is supposed to just shadow me the entire game. And I do a lot of standing. He's going to be right next to me, so might as well just give that guy a little pull on his on his hair outside of his knee. You know, just <laughs> piss him off. Like, hey, fuck you! Like, oh me? Why are you standing less than an inch away from me for this entire game? I'm but give me a little breathing room. I'm not doing anything. I'm taking a knee right now in the middle of the game, just trying to get a win. Oh, I'm so shadow you all game. It's going to be a long day for you then, bub. Pull his hair again, and he pulls my hair. And then what did I do? Shave my legs so he couldn't pull my hair anymore. Now I'm the asshole with no retaliability at all. It's beautiful. Superhero. You should have seen the French people, Damn. man. They hated it. <laughs> I had this French guy. They're he, hairy. He ended up kicking me in the chest. Oh. I have a picture of six studs right in my chest because this guy kicked wow. me right in the fucking chest. I lost my... <laughs> it was that moment, the whole thing. Yeah, it was a big deal. Oh, but I was, uh, It was in France. He got a yellow. But I was fucking with that guy the entire game. I mean, it was the entire game I was fucking. I think I even gave him a ball tap at one point. <laughs> I mean, I was an asshole out there. But So I was a pretty talented soccer player. So people would literally just shadow me the entire game. So it was like, no matter where I want, there's just a guy following me, right? Huge compliment. Huge, huge compliment. But for me, I was, about, I was sick of it. You know, I want to, I like some easy fucking operations sure. here. Trying to play. Ma- make me work a lot harder here. So when we went to France, we played against a French guy. And I don't know how they knew, but they had a guy just shadowing me the entire game. He acted as if he didn't speak any English. So this is already <laughs> off to a rough start. So then there was this one time where somebody played me a ball like to my left and he was standing on my right. And I just did like a fake little like, whoop, poof, like, you know, like, uh, like I'm going to go right in the balls. And he was not happy, not happy. Ref called it too. ref caught it. Uh. So now I'm in immediately bad guy. Number one in the entire country, probably at that point. <laughs> so a couple of my teammates are like, did you, you just bought, you did that on purpose. I was like, yeah. And they're like, rough start. <laughs> it's like first five minutes in the game. I get loose uh, probably right before half. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this fucking guy comes flying in with this goddamn cleat, and it gets me right in the chest, and I just wow. get like, oh, it was like a flying kick. Yeah, yeah, I get de- the, there. Might have been like a volley, or the ball was yeah, bouncing, sure. and he just acted as if it was this. But that was definitely oh. a square kick yeah. right to my fucking chest, oh. and Zip down French. I go. <laughs> he came out with this magnifique spray. This fucking it was the the frozen ice spray yeah. that they do. Oh. They start spraying my body. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad situation. Yeah. That's the worst retaliation of all time. Yeah, yeah. That's I got people that punch me and stuff, like in the ribs. 
But I was meant during for. the run, right? Yeah, but I was meant yeah. for it. I mean, I was like fucking forty five pounds heavier than everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I ain't got time for this. I'd love to see that guy right now. He's got his own podcast right outside of Lyon, France. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember that I took my cleat and planted it in his chest. There's a guy from Turkey. There's a guy from Turkey. I almost got into a fight with. He was on the Turkey, the Turkish national team, uh, just this recently, and I didn't know that until I got a message from somebody I played with on the team that I played over there, and it was like, "You remember blah blah blah? That was the guy you were calling like Rico Swat. He had this hair slick back thing that I was just fucking with him the entire game, and he made it into the fucking Turkish national." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was good. It was all good. My soccer stories are even. We, we never, I never really talk about them. I was a fucking character in that sport now because I was bigger, stronger, and faster than everybody. So it was as if I was the complete opposite end of the totem pole that I was in the football world. That's why when I got in the football world, I just stopped talking. It's hard to talk shit whenever you're punting balls, but whenever you can kick faster than somebody, run faster than somebody. And score better than somebody. And knock the piss out of them. It's Seriously. hard not to talk shit. And I, I, I'll tell you what, I miss those days. So you're a little bit Ibrahimovic, like out there, right? Yeah. Just faster? I, I, I was fast. I was fast. That's why whenever people talk about that 40 thing, I was like, I think you guys are kind of <laughs> discounting what one of my major upsides was, which was my speed. But anytime I would go to kick a ball, man, it, it no matter what country they're from, there was an entire fucking flinch city. Like, <laughs> please don't fucking do this. <laughs> it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Free kicks were always like a big moment. Anytime there was a free kick, like when Beckham was getting hot with free kicks and anytime there was a, a set ball play, like when Beckham was in there, everybody would peek their head in or when Ronaldo was hitting them well there for a while. It was like that for me, but like in little kid soccer tournaments, like, oh, they got one. And like everybody <laughs> from other field would be like, let's see what this fucking kid does. <laughs> and then it would either go 45 yards over the net <laughs> or smoked into the fucking net. It the never story your dad tells that you destroying that kid's arm, ripping it out of socket. Broke his arm. Yeah. Broke the kid's arm, yeah. At the elbow. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> Ran up and finished the goal, too. So the kid gets his arm. <laughs> so I, I rip a shot. Kid puts his arm in front of it. Pff, dislocated elbow, I think. Down. Everybody's like, ah! Kid falls down crying, and the ball is laying there, like, going and tap it in. <laughs> my mom's like, you're such a fucking asshole. And I was like, uh, they didn't blow the whistle. Huh? And I think it's now 4 nothing. I should probably call this one. Hey, good goal. Yeah, good goal. thank you. Yeah. It was, I, was a, I was a futsal national champion, which futsal, for those of you that don't know it is, it's a smaller ball, and it's on, like, a, a gymnasium floor. It's weighted, weighted too, right? Yeah. yeah, it's a weighted ball. And if you, could, if you had a strong leg, that ball would get moving. Oof. And I used to fuck some shit up with that ball now. <laughs> Less running there, too. Less that. running. Ooh. I had good vision, too, so it was perfect. Yep. I used to just park it in the back of the diamond. It was four on four. I used to just park it in the back of the diamond. And any time that ball was just rolling, just a little bit of space. There was a fucking rocket coming at that. <laughs> we had an American muscle line, and then there was like these foreign kids on our futsal team, and we had an American muscle line and then the other line. And it was hysterical. Like it was me, Trebendous, a couple other people that just had huge legs. We're playing in this national championship in Boston. And then our second line was like a, a Latino group of kids from Pittsburgh. They were on our team as well. We didn't even speak to each other. We're two different. <laughs> it was like a line change type thing. And it was fucking beautiful. It, it, we would just go out there. And this team had just got done like facing against these little like quick guys. And then all of a sudden we get on the fucking the field. Brutes. Yeah, we just come in and they're like, oh no. <laughs> fucking hammering the ball like 120 miles an hour. <laughs> see you later. You ever out and about in the city and you see a guy wearing some shorts and just have that urge? Does it ever come back? Uh, there's a fucking field. There. No, no, no. Not to play. To pull his hair on his legs. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was strictly just to piss the guy off. That, that was literally just like, I was like, uh. I was like, leave me the fuck alone, man. <laughs> I, I used to get into it with refs, too. Refs knew me ever since I was a kid because I was always pretty good at soccer. But, uh, you know, I did have... <laughs> I did have some things about me that were a little cheeky, as they call it in <laughs> soccer. A little cheeky, a little cheeky play. So there's always this one ref. He was an older guy, white hair. He was friends with my dad, actually. He was always very hard on me, like very, very, very hard on me. And this one time during a futsal tournament, he, he kicked me off the field for something. 
And I told him, like, I, it was like an S my D, I'll murder your family type thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, the entire fucking tournament just stopped. And he was, I was like, oh, I think I fucked up here. And I just kind of walked into, like, th through the penalty box that they had on the basher boards and then, like, right out of the building. And my dad was like, you got to be nicer to refs. Like, that's on me. I was a completely different animal in the soccer field. I would have hated me. I would have hated me. Shaved my whole body tanned. <laughs> I was fucking good, though. For man. the national ones, uh, did you have to, like, deal with refs that didn't speak English? Uh, I played in a game in Germany where the guy spoke no English. And that was a wild moment. I can only imagine. Because I am a chatty guy, right? So mm -hmm. I got I got some things to say. Like, hey, this guy is fucking cleating my ankle here. Uh, excuse me. Nothing. <laughs> nine, nine. <laughs> hey, uh, this fucking guy, nothing said. But I just... Soccer used to, if I wasn't so lazy, I probably would be a, would have been a superstar. Boy, I think I had asthma though. I think it was undocumented. Right? <laughs> yeah. I think I had fucking asthma. Though. I got tired. I got tired. Pretty, pretty much. If you were like really good at soccer, you're, you have an aptitude to be great at almost every sport, right? Well, there's a involves a little bit of everything. Pat Anger told me that he wishes his kid play. He like, he wants his kids to play soccer because it makes you light on your feet. It, it teaches you a lot of things. You have to be light on your feet. You have to have good dexterity and you have to have good vision in soccer too, because that's a big field. So you, you got to see a lot of things happening. I think soccer is a great sport to get your kid in a lot of conditioning too. I mean, that shit's yeah. running forever. I used to fear going to practices because I knew the conditioning test that was coming at the end of it every fucking Tuesday and Thursday. I used to just fear it. <laughs> I'm just driving to practice. I'm like, I fucking know what's coming. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be good during the practice. But the, as soon as that thing ends, I know what's coming. We got like 25 minutes of conditioning, and I got no shot. And that started when I was like 11 years old, too, all the way through U18. Like every single practice was basically like a – Let's hope Pat doesn't die. <laughs> and then when I played at West Virginia, it was the same fucking thing. I played at West Virginia during the spring, and we would play games. Coach LeBlanc, good guy. We would play. He just asked me if I, he asked each year if I could play. Rich Rod wouldn't let me play. So I played during the spring whenever Coach Stewart, they welcomed me with open arms. It was awesome. But I hadn't played soccer in three years. And I was living pretty hard at, in college. I think we can all. I think we've all heard stories. <laughs> <laughs> Got forty thousand dollars in loans out just <laughs> just to party. <laughs> so I mean, I didn't live as clean as I should have. But I wasn't played, and in practice, he he created a rule to kill me. We would play a game to five. I would score like three goals, four goals. We would win, and it'd be loser runs. And then I, okay, you said it. Here we go. I'm going to win this game. Then. <laughs> and then it would be like, win or lose, McAfee still runs. And I'm like, this is a fucking terrible game. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm probably not going to show up in these games, by the way, if it's just win or lose, McAfee still runs. He was like, you have to get in shape. I was like, I know. And then I got hit one time, and Bill Stewart was like, Patrick, you know <laughs> – at less than a year from now, this is fun. Soccer's fun. I understand that. But people are going to pay you a lot of money just to kick the ball and not run it off. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thank you, Coach, too. I was actually looking for a reason to get out of here. <laughs> there's, a, there's a win or lose McAfee still runs rule that I am about <laughs> fucking done with. <laughs> I do see a soccer game that happens over here, though. It's off the exit uh, 65. It's a little pickup game. Mm-hmm. Every time I ride, I ride by it and there's people playing, I think about stopping oh. and just ripping their nets. Just <laughs> <laughs> take the net. No English is being spoken in those games, too. Sure, yeah. I give a little look, see, I'm like, eh, I don't know if I can just show up and pop off. And <laughs> I do miss the soccer days, though. The knees are probably fucked because of it, but I do miss those days. Used to be a real athlete. That's yeah, part of it. Now I'm getting old. I don't think I'll let my kid play soccer. He'll play early, but I don't think he's going to be committed to soccer. Not enough money in America. <laughs> no. If you want to be rich in soccer, you got to go overseas. It's a lot of yep. traveling too, isn't Re it? Yeah, every like week. Every weekend. My yeah. dad. That's why I don't like riding in cars. I was yeah. in my dad's fucking car every single weekend of my high school life. <laughs> the every, McAfee shortcut. <laughs> every fucking the, the Tim McAfee shortcut was just something I lived with every fucking weekend, <laughs> just driving all over. <laughs> All over the country for soccer. The one year uh, they documented our team played, our traveling team played 180 games that year. Like, <laughs> Jeez. What? It's insane. Well, because there's like, sometimes there's like 10 games in a tournament, but still. You guys are going to the finals, I assume, most tournaments too, so you're playing His all. His team was incredible. His team was very good. They won a lot. Plum, Tony. Plum was a good soccer school. Yeah, that's why our football team, not great. <laughs> <laughs> if all of our soccer players would have played football, I honestly think we could probably win four straight state championships. Wait, Tony played soccer? Holy man, he's good. Tony kicks, huh? I did until ninth grade, and then I just picked Tony between kicks. football and soccer, and okay. I went football. He was a, hey, he was a good goalie too. Athlete. Kid was an athlete. 
Thank you, sir. Absolute athlete. Nice. Now, granted, he runs around, breaks his foot. I also now have adult <laughs> onset uh, asthma as well. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I honestly think I've had asthma my entire life. Just nobody would talk about it. <laughs> Mine's adult onset. Oh, of course. I realized that at an early age. I quit soccer at eight. It's a lot of running. Saved myself a lot of trouble. Well, we used to do these conditioning tests, like two miles in 12 minutes or whatever. And honestly, any team I was on was just like... All right, this is a McAfee test to see if he can fucking get it or not. Let's go, Pat. <laughs> I used to have people like rallying behind me, like eleven fifty nine, like falling. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ! The beep test was a nightmare. Oh. The beep test was this thing where it's like twenty yards. Oh, well, the pacer test. Oh right? yeah. yeah, twenty yards and cones on one side, and you just have to run to the other side. It's so simple. Just when the beep happens, you have to run to the other side, and then the next beep, you have to run back. And I forget what year it was introduced to my life, but I'll tell you what, that was one of the worst days <laughs> of my entire fucking life. I beep and I'm running and in my head, I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to time this up. So I get there perfect timing and then I'll just continue to jog. So it won't be a sprint stop. It'll just be a, a continuous jog. You know, this will be just, I can jog for fucking 20 minutes. This is no problem. So then uh, you get there and then all of a sudden as you're touching that thing is actually beeping and then you got to like pick up the pace I, I think we had to get, I don't remember the number. Let's say it was 15 beeps. Like you had to get to 20 beeps or 15 beeps. I got to the number and just fell. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got the super hardos that are going for like another 45 fucking minutes. Uh, and I'm like, man, uh, why, how do you guys do this? Like, I wish you guys spent a lot more time on like playing soccer <laughs> than fucking running so much. Like, let's worry about soccer. Maybe we'll be a better team. <laughs> In hindsight, I, I'm thinking about high school sports. I knew some guys on the cross country team. Huh. I knew them, and I never got it, and I could never <laughs> relate don't. to them. Never will. I could never, and they were friends. It was like, hey, the, but if we tried to talk like, hey, you got a football game this Friday night, you got a basketball game, you got a baseball game. It's like, hey, when's your next, when are you guys running in the woods? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, like, when, I, I just never still got the high school cross country uh, thing. Hey, they're I mean? mental warriors, yeah. bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we Think about a- it now. They're in great shape. They're probably, you know, my age at 50 years old, still running in great shape. They're the know? people outside right now in the short shorts yeah. as soon as the sun comes that is showing off in front of every other human in the city that there's fitness still here. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's like, we get it, bro. Treadmills too, man. <laughs> but uh, they're mental warriors. You got, there's a lot of time to quit there. Jeff Riverty used to work here. Now he works at Barstool in New York. Um, he was a cross-country superstar. And he didn't mention it, in, and I didn't really think about it. I always just... Like, in every sport I've ever played, running is what? Punishment. Punishment, right? So why would you just sign up for punishment? You gotta be a weird dude. And I think they are to do that. Oh, yeah. But also, if you think about it from their perspective, there's a lot of quit in your brain where you're in the middle of the woods and there's nobody else around you. Just you. Just you. And you're just, you just got to continue to fucking run. It's tough. I don't know if I could do that. I think that is an actual talent to continue running in the woods because I'm probably stopping, <laughs> going into the woods. You'll have your phone on you too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dad, mile half. I got to a half mile. Dad. Please come pick me up. I know there's a shortcut in these woods too. Yeah, I'm yeah. find every excuse. Oh, I think there's a rock in my shoe. Ah, fuck. Let me yeah. untie this thing real quick. Ah, it's already a too far ahead. I'll never. New song. I figured new song <laughs> i'm ba- impressed by that bailey was real good at cross country they made him do it for track so middle school oh. like they bumped him up two grades to run so he ran with eighth graders and sixth grader but the first one i go to you're in the group of parents and they're they're cross country parents their kids have been doing it a long time oh. i don't know nothing about it i don't think it's any worse yeah <laughs> so it starts and then we see him go and i'm like okay we just, we just wait here right and they'll be <laughs> back eventually and then they're, they're like, no, no, no. We got to go catch him at the turn. Right. Oh, so, for, so you're for, doing a cut. Yeah, now I'm like, now I'm running? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. This is bullshit. Yeah, he'll, he'll, come, he'll end up back here. Yeah, yeah. Is this yeah, the finish line? This yeah, is where they right. finish. Yeah, okay. Yeah. He's coming here? Yeah, you got to go motivate him. I, if I don't have to motivate him, then he's... He's got a, you know, he's not tough. He's enough, a sixth grader. He, he's just fucking running with yeah. the crowd. He doesn't even know there's a race happening right now. I'll be the first one at the finish line. How about that? You guys go do the fucking turn, make sure they're okay. I'll be right here. That's like for the marathon. Sam ran a half marathon. Uh huh. And I guess there's people that like follow them and meet their family and support them. At, Sure. I just stood at one spot, and yeah. I probably watched 4,000 people jog by me, and then Sam came, and I was like, Sam! And then she just ran by, I was like, all right. <laughs> Good job. I did my job. I did my job here. I was very proud of her. She ran a half marathon. That's a that big no joke. Man. That's a lot 13 and a half miles. That's even no imagine. joke. She signed up for it two days before. I've never seen her run. <laughs> and she's, she did it. Like she, she was running when I saw her, like 
12 and a half miles in. I was like, it's unbelievable. That's fucking, amazing. Wow. <laughs> she sprinted uh, yesterday, too, to get into the car. We went and had brunch with my mom. Mm-hmm. And Sam's normally late. So normally, she's not normally late. She, <laughs> she she takes her time getting ready for things. So we normally end up a little bit late, much like me. So we're not a good, it's not a good thing for us to be together. Because <laughs> it's just like we're kind of nonchalant. And then we look at the clock. Oh, fuck, we're supposed to be there in seven minutes. It takes 20 minutes to get there. We're already 13 minutes late if we start doing the deductive reasoning here. <laughs> and then she's not finished yet. So then we wait until the time we're supposed to be there. We leave. In our minds, it's like, yeah, we're good. We left when we're supposed to be there. <laughs> but still, we're 20 minutes late, right? Mm-hmm. So yesterday, we go to get brunch. Tell my mom we'll pick her up at a certain time so we can drive her. And that time was coming up very quick. And I was ready because Sally deserves, you know? Sure. A little course. bit of respect. Oh, yeah. That's how we'll word it. <laughs> I just so happened to wake up earlier and I got ready. So I'm going outside. I'm putting my shoes on. Sam comes sprinting by me, gets in the car, sits down. This is who's waiting on who. Oh. Takes a picture of me. Oh, takes a nice. picture of me and even sends it to my mom wow. and goes, uh, just waiting on Pat to get in the car. <laughs> oh. But I watched her move. sprint by me and I was like, hey. Good form. Some yeah. fucking athleticism there. Wow. So you look like an athlete. I was, Let's go. I didn't know it was being used against me, <laughs> but it was. It was an incredible moment. The glory days, man. Glory days are awesome. Send us a um, picture of you when you were younger. Uh, it'll be a throwback Thursday on a Tuesday, hopefully. <laughs> and those pictures that make us laugh the most will win some free merch. Mm-hmm. Nice. Must be a younger picture of you, though. Don't be sending us some random person's dick pic. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Which is what you should be doing, by the way. If anybody asks for that meat, go and see somebody else's tweet and send their dick. Don't be sending your own dick. That's just uh, rules one through five of mm-hmm. technology world that we live in. Or what Todd does. Todd, what do you do whenever uh, dick pics need to be sent? You take a picture of it next to a piece of your neighbor's mail. So <laughs> then you have uh, plausible deniability at the end. Like, <laughs> that's John Edwards' dick, obviously. He lives at the house next to me. <laughs> Todd would never do that himself. He just, in his years of law enforcement, saw this work. Yes. So it's something you think of. We'd like a picture of you from when you were younger. And we'd also like to put together a collage of when they were young PMS listeners. Let's Zito go. will put that together. That'll Can't be wait. fun. You find a couple that make us laugh. We'll send you some merch. Love it. Hashtag Endgame. Hashtag Endgame. We appreciate you. Ty Schmidt. Hit the music.